to help down here <laughs> it's a dr green thumb show be real tv youtube twitch and discord welcome to it um i'm gonna violate right here but i'm i'm gonna give myself a reprieve right because this needs to be said <laughs> right so this okay. is the one after this it starts fuck whoever bought all those bullshit likes right there we don't do that over here so you know fuck the fuck off there i got it off. you right. said you said Time, timer starts now all right <laughs> i got c minus what up everybody how are you happy thursday yeah i just gave myself a little 20 second time out real jackson son that's how we do it i like that uh to the right psycho leasy legendary beat nuts cheers cheers i want to salute hip-hop 50 years, no doubt. Yeah, I feel you, B. Today. Yes. I saw yes. two things. 49 or 50. Same 50. shit. Oops. There it is. Salud. Word up, the Treehouse crew. What's going on, B? Dominator, Ra Ra, and Blombo. What's up, man? We up here. We're doing good. All right. And we got a special guest in the house. L.A. native. Glasses Malone up in here. That's right. It was a good day, man. It is 49, man. Good to have you up here, my. Word. And uh, we also got E Zone in the building. What's up, everybody? Got a new table, huh? Yeah, shout out to Steph Tone for uh, that table. New I, Coke table? I mean, essentially, like, I'm pretty sure that that table has probably seen some pretty famous noses on there because. I don't see those. I mean, it's 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 one of it's one of those like '90s pieces of furniture, and I, you know, he. It's a Coke Lord table. Dude, the whole thing is made of mirror. Like the, everything's. I mean, made does of, does your nose really touch the table? Cocaine I mean, I don't know anybody. When you look at like the that. mirror, does your nose get a funny tingle? To, well, there's a straw to <laughs> prevent the contact. But yeah. But I, but I mean, I just haven't seen furniture like that since like I don't know, like like mid 1990s, where like my parents would be like. <laughs> We don't buy that kind of stuff. Like, why do you want an all mirror table? It looked cool. It but looks cool, yeah. Shout out to Steph Tone. Now uh, Ray has a new desk. <laughs> yeah. Now you could look in the mirror and see your nose hairs. Well, there's like four. There's like t a seat for four. So like Ray's, Ray's gonna be like the keeper. Be like, I don't want that stuff keep, around keep, me. Keep the little straw right there on the side. We have a glass. <laughs> <laughs> little. That yeah. yeah. Well. Mm. Hey, salute <laughs> to Godfather for coming through yesterday. Uh -huh. Lord, I'll say what's what's up to to GF. It was hilarious. As He's, long as the shirt don't come off, we're we're golden. <laughs> Absolutely. I thought it was coming off. You thought it was coming off. He was he was getting crazy. Three more he, shots. He was gonna pick up Caddy Blaze. Three yeah. more, three more shots. He would have <laughs> suplex. Do you get DMs about people uh, like afraid for Caddy Blaze's well being? <laughs> no. I, I get I, the, I get I those messages because I think like they know I'm gonna check them. I check. I try to get through all my messages. And I got like four yesterday. They were like, yo, um, what happened after the show? Like, is Blaze okay? <laughs> yeah, they were asking me, like, because he's, I mean, not for nothing, but he mouths off to, to GF, like, like they're wrestling. And, and GF, sometimes you don't know if he's buried. Uh, yeah, two more shots yesterday that this table, he might have put him through it. I don't know. <laughs> One of our homies, you know, WWE Hall of Famer, Godfather, he was here yesterday. And one of our co-hosts, him, they they always, you know, get into uh, 
<laughs> you know, he he provokes him, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. he does. Maybe he wanted him to put him through a table. Growing up, I kind of wanted to be put through a table. I mean, as I got older, no. Not yet. When I was a kid, it <laughs> seemed like a cool idea. It right. Did. Yeah. <laughs> you just ain't got past that point of wanting to get put through a table. Yeah, man. And it, it, it's got to be the right table because if yeah, it's the wrong tough one, table this, this right would here. be a this, tough If this was a table, you yeah. going to the hospital. Yeah, you <laughs> wait, go on to this <laughs> table. Okay. It's not happening. You're going to end up in that like Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, all yeah, bad. Yeah, so this, yeah, this table is just going to hold you up till they come peel you off and <laughs> put you on that gurney. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, you guys did it. I don't think it was a... I mean, the wrestling was around, but I don't think the instruments of like damage were around during oh, that. Oh, yeah, they were. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say like in the, in the night, it got really crazy with the attitude area, and I remember there was like people and kids like catching cases because they would hurt like their, oh yeah, you know what I mean, like their their, their uh, loved ones while trying to re reenact these things, and they would have to be like, do not you know reenact these things. But you know, like you did want to try it. I remember one time we went to like my uncle's house when I was little, and uh, we had a bunch of like uh, drywall, the stuff that looks like it has chalk in the middle. Right. There was pieces, and I don't know what they. Were, but me and my cousin were like, "Yo, this is what we've been waiting for," <laughs> and we started just bam hitting each other, and it would break, dude. We got in trouble. Of Ma course you did. <laughs> I bet you did. Material was wasted. They, those that's were, expensive stuff, those, man. Yeah. No, and they were cut specifically to fill a certain thing, uh, and we were like, "Yo, they must not use them. They're little pieces. We could hit each other with these." Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all fun till it's not. <laughs> oh man! I mean, you got to remember, even back in the '80s and the '90s, like before there were camera phones, even all this backyard wrestling stuff was happening back then too. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just wasn't being taped, but you were still hearing, you know, about kids getting together at someone's oh, house man. with a makeshift ring, and people couldn't wait to like try to put a chair on someone's back. You know what I mean? Hey, I was hey, like, I got to emulate what I see on TV. Hey, my, my homie Rick Dog, he had sons that were like super into the wrestling. Thing, right you know he would take them to 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 the matches and to a degree he was into it you know what i mean them kids learned all the body slam moves and everything like that so when they got into fights at school they would actually be using these moves <laughs> oh, on other shit. kids that's dangerous dude man. it is dangerous man rick got called to to school many times wow. <laughs> because you know i mean he he used to be able to get down. He was very athletic. He, the dude could box. He could wrestle. He could he could hoop and uh, play football. Like he like he could have been like an all American if if the hood wasn't like first right. Yeah. So his boys got some of that. So they play football and all that stuff. But they're into the wrestling, and they practice. They they used to practice on each other at home, like on the bed, slam each other like that. So when they got out into the street. <laughs> And the two brothers got into like little scrappity dudes with other kids. They would actually use the wrestling moves on the other kids. You know what was practice? Was getting trouble for that. Yeah. When yeah. You're, when you're a kid, a jumper. That's like the best practice for a kid. When you want to practice those moves, well, you can break your damn neck too. I, I mean, you you could always bounce back though. But like you know, you're you're not as you're, a kid. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Of course, nothing phases you when you're a kid. Your skin heals back in like two days, bro. Like you get a cut after thirty five, bro. Yeah, you wait a permanent. Yeah, you wait a month. Be a, that <laughs> shit gonna be a wound for life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gonna have it's a gonna story come, to tell. It's gonna come back when you're forty. Like, oh yeah. man, I thought this was God. <laughs> yeah, man. But now we that that used to be the training grounds because oh, yeah. I I didn't have access to a trampoline, but birthday parties. Stunners to everybody. <laughs> Stunner, yeah, yeah. Stunner is the yeah. greatest. Yeah. That's the yeah. greatest finishing move ever. That's yeah, one of the. And best. you could just like pull it out anytime. Yeah, <laughs> dude, there was a stone cold. There was a kid that I knew that kept trying to like pile drive somebody. Like he he wanted. Yeah, that's to, not you gonna break. Yeah, yeah and I was like, not. and they're like, he's like, come on, just let me. And like, no, 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 no. no. Come on. No. Oh, you do that wrong. You're you're yeah. That's still paralyzed. Teeth activities. It's, it's funny when I was a kid, I was thinking about how the like wrestling changed. Like the DDT was just Jake the Snake. Yeah. Now everybody uses it. Now like, they have a form of it. Yeah. Yeah, they open the show up with it. And it's like, yeah. I used to wait for Jake the Snake to hit somebody with the DDT. Yeah, that was Jake like, the snake was the original stunner. That was yeah. the original stunner, yeah. Uh, I wonder does like Stone Cold give credit to. to he does. Jake. He, okay, he does. They, they did a. They did a. The podcast. One of those things. Well, no, it wasn't the podcast. It was in one of the documentaries, right? Uh, I'm not sure if it was Beyond the Mat or something like that, but either way, WWE did it. And he was saying that because he because Stone Cold was was a whole different character before he was Stone yeah, he Cold. Was, he was a stunning. stunning. Steve. I remember that? Yeah, he, he had like hair, blonde yeah. hair. Yeah. And when he did his when he re remade himself, one of his big influences was 
Jake Roberts. And actually, Jake Roberts is the one who who handed him, like, you know, like passing the torch to him. That's ill. Yeah. And you know, Jake the Snake used to have those big ass pythons that he used to roll with. So when when Stone Cold turned into Stone Cold, he he was also known as the Rattlesnake Snake. Oh, he was. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, it was the Rattlesnake Stone Cold Steve. And Austin. he had that like full like Trailer Park yeah. attitude. And he never yeah. carried a snake. <laughs> yep, he never had one. But it was the Rattlesnake. That was That's a good was, point. Yeah, is this, is uh, this, this the same dude who ended up being governor or mayor or whatever? No, no, no that that's Jesse Ventura. Jesse the Body Ventura. Oh, he wasn't really. He was cool. Uh, Jesse the body. When I was little, he was okay. Who, Jesse? Yeah, Jesse was okay. Yeah, he was okay. He was so. trying to get a run at Hulk Hogan, but yeah, like that just, just wasn't going to happen. He wasn't big yeah. enough. He was a great that. commentator, though. Yes. Yeah, he was dope. Right. Dude is a great commentator yeah. and very smart dude. Yes, absolutely. Um, Yeah, salute to him. Yeah, like yeah, any, any had been in an iconic movie, Predator. Like when Vince McMahon was, com was commentating along with him and Mean Gene, those are some excellent, you would hear like just... How they would just go off of yeah, each he other. Knew, you know he knew how to work the mic. Absolutely. Sure. I was just talking about it on the podcast yesterday, like watching Vince McMahon get ran out of wrestling and somebody who'd be that devoted to their company. I remember he took stunners. Like, yeah, he did. Like, he got stunned. Like, his daughter got stunned. Well, he his took, son got he stunned. His wife got stunned. He took he, major bumps, yeah. Yeah. It's like they ran you out. Him and Shane. Like, Shane did a, 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 um, one, of those, one of those cage Hell matches. Hell in a Cell. He did a hell in a yeah. cell and flew off the top yeah. like Mick Foley. Damn. I mean, people gave respect to Shane for that because, I mean, that's... That's tough. That's tough. I mean, that's those are hella bumps to take right there. What's the the match where if you get the briefcase, then you get... The, you Money win, in the bag. Money, Money in, the, in bag. the bag. And that yeah. briefcase is an automatic title show. It was right? also just called the briefcase match. Yeah. Was it? Or a, I thought it was money in the. Well, that's what they ended up calling it. And then I remember the first SmackDown video game, it was there. And it was like part of like the new matches you could play. And it was called Money in the Bag Match. Money in the Bag. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is like if you win that, you get an automatic title shot, right? And I think they changed it to the ladder and match. The ladder yeah, match. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. There was the ladder match. But they, it was. Uh, the much... Hardys were fuck. Damn. <laughs> no. The Hardys were big on the ladder matches. Yeah. They, them and the Dudleys. I think, Deadly. oh, you know, I know what the difference is. It's so much, so money in the bank is when the money's at stake, and then the ladder they have the belt. Yeah, the so belt. You know, so you had to just pull the belt down with with the ladder. And I remember that's how he won. Yeah, mm. they came up with those sorts of different types of. Did a really good job of reinventing wrestling over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they got more um, athletic, acrobatic dudes now because, like, you know, they they had that problem with all the big huge guys and the allegations of the steroids so they oh, man. pulled off the big dudes well most of them and and got smaller guys that could like move around and, and it sucks do exciting stuff nah, i mean you know some of it's really really cool like when you think about how they're flipping around in that ring from the top rope and in between and all that man like that, that's a, that's a hell yeah, of a but, skill set but you're not gonna have a, a george the animal steel kind of guy yeah, yeah but or, you don't need that right andre now. the giants you those, kinda, well, andre those giant, are like heroes to me they like villains though man like it's all it's all very like yeah. and like you know well no there's villains there's it's, villains it's just that they're different they're they're, <laughs> they're much smaller than they used to be and mainstream changed it up a lot yeah. like it's on regular tv but i i just i felt like wrestlers when we was younger like that's what made it, it was yeah. bigger than life. Yeah. Like Hulk Hogan, like I met Hulk Hogan. Those dudes This one I'm signing, when I'm signing Cash Money, you know, he at the Hit Factory, his daughter is recording. Yeah. So this is 2009. And like, he didn't already call somebody a nigga and everything else. And <laughs> it still didn't matter to me because it was like Hulk Hogan. It was yeah. like, right. Bro, and he, and like, he was walking across the studio and Birdman seen me staring at him. He's like, oh, I was like, <laughs> Holy shit, it's Hulk Hogan, cuz it's yeah. crazy. And he was like, Oh, that ain't nothing. Hulk, check it out. And Hulk walked through, he shook my hand, and I just was looking he's at this cool big dude. mother. His yeah. motherfucker's huge. And I'm like, Huge. Yeah. And he's an older man yeah. at this point. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and he just was big. That That's a big part of wrestling, seeing these bigger than life characters. Yeah, and this dude is what, like 6'3, six, 6'4, six, huge. Like, yeah. you know, like out. And, you know, at that age, because we we met him somewhere like when he, you know, he's already up there in his fifties and you know early maybe early sixties or something like that. He's better. Sixty nine. Yeah, he, yeah, he was probably in his late fifties when we met him, 
and he was still brick, you know, like. Yeah, but it's Hulk Hogan. So like, you like you kind of get geeked Hulk, out. Maybe. <laughs> I, I don't think it goes geeked away out. like that. I don't think like you know like you know like people like Arnold and people that have been conditioned so much. Well, you got to stay on. No, you have you to could but, lose it. But that yeah. does. But that doesn't like. I don't think that is like an effort for them. They know that in order for them to really keep that body and they're so used to it, that little workout. That we might be like, oh man, that's really intense. That's their just that's their normal. Bring them back. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, like that's just well, like, hey, you know, I crack my fingers. You know, well, the, their workouts are way different because yeah, they're yeah. they're hitting real heavy weights. They're taking different sort of supplements and other stuff, and they're big frame dudes already, right? Their frames are already big. You know what I mean? So they can get wide and they can fill fill the hell out. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. That that but that was you know these dudes were enormous so like in the ring when you're watching them you're watching these big dudes like take these crazy bumps and fly all over the ring that's like a show right there you know what I'm saying bigger than life bigger yeah. than life I yeah. just think about it and that's what made like so you're right like that's what made a character like Ric Flair so cool because yeah. you had all of these kind of mountain type men that were just huge and he was not that this little scrawny yeah. okay. tricky you know that's why we love rick flair so now it's all rick flair hey. that don't look they were hey, we, were, hey, we were just talking about him yesterday glasses is that that he has had such a great run because he got embraced from not just wrestling um community but the the the, the cats in hip-hop that grew up off wrestling like us hey. right and now he's in rap videos. He's, you know what I mean? Like he's getting referenced in songs and yep. whole songs, man. Whole man. songs. Uh, he just uh, had his last match, yeah. and at seventy something, which was over the weekend. Yeah. He said he saw him. How did he look? No, I mean, bro, he, that's a, that's a recent picture right there. Like literally, he he's wrestled his off shit. weed, and he got and he he ended up being getting bloody in that match. That Rick match. Flizzy. That's what made him sweet though. Like bring it. you, he just be getting abused, but he could just endure pain, but. <laughs> That's, I think that's what wrestling, you know, it misses that larger than life. Those guys were just. Yeah, they knew how to give a, sh a like a proper oh, what, show. Wasn't he part of the Four Horsemen? Right? Yeah, the it Four was him, Lex Luger. Arn Anderson. Uh, Arn Anderson. And someone else. Can't remember who the. Yeah, I remember reading about it in the magazines, the wrestling magazines, when you'd go to like the grocery store, I'd, whenever I'd go with my mom. And there'd be these wrestling magazines, these magazines totally just devoted to wrestling. But it was, it was always, a thing. Yeah, and it was just and it would be WWF and NW uh, what was it? NWA, right? NWO. Na the the National Wrestling Association. Was it yeah. New World Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so NWO's uh, New World. NWO's New Order New World Order with Hulk and all yeah, the and it came um, yeah. yeah, I just remember Sting like and Ric Flair. Rick Flair Kevin was like, Nash and Razor yeah. Ramon. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I, and I just remember being in like knowing that I was seeing WWF because it was on regular TV, but whenever I got a chance to see an NWA match with Ric Flair, Lex Luger, and any of the Four Horsemen, it was like, oh my god, it was like a whole new style, but of the same thing. You know what I mean? And yeah. that was exciting because it was like they were like the more gangster version. You know what's funny? I think that's where the NWA, I mean the NWA, they had the kind of the modern WWE look. Yeah. Because you think about guys yeah. like Arn Anderson, they were all little guys. And yeah. old school. Until Goldberg. Right. And then Goldberg came in. Goldberg came, came up there. and was the monster yeah. for a minute. Yeah. He but, was dope, too. Yeah, he was dope. He was yeah. super yeah. fucking dope. Yeah. Fucking Bill Goldberg. Oh, man. Yeah. Do it again. Yeah. I did. Sting. Stop. <laughs> Give me your top three favorite wrestlers of all time. Because you, you, you ahead of us. I always like Stone Cold. Like, sure. what he did was so different. Like, still no one has done what Stone Cold did. Um, I mean, when you think about Hulk Hogan, too, I mean, he was the original pioneer. So those two, right? And uh, I don't know on the third. The third, I mean, because there's so many, but yeah. it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Too many. I mean, how you know, how could you forget Macho Man? Man, dude. Yeah. Because he did something way different. The original little man. Yeah. Was he small? Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't a tall dude. He was wide, and he was buffed the dude, hell I, out. I've never, you know, I never saw the dude. But like every time I saw him growing up, dude, I was like, yeah. oh, he must be huge. He was kind of like he was Rob, always he, little compared he was to six everybody one. else. Yeah, he is like Rob Van Dam. I still, yeah. you know, like yeah. Rob Van Dam's size. Uh, Rob Van Dam might be six two, maybe. He might be a little bit taller, but Macho was a little bit wider and bigger. 
You know what I mean? I and, put ski. But he wasn't like a giant. <laughs> no. And he had a hell of a run. I mean, one of the most iconic wrestlers. I mean, people reference him and, you know, do their their version of Macho Man all the time. He'd be in videos. Ooh, yeah. right? he, he'd Corrupt be, does that all the time. He would be in I'd videos. be talking to Corrupt. He'd be like, ooh, yeah. And I'd be like, damn, he just really brought that back. Hey, you know this guy was going to be a pro baseball player. I think actually he pr played pro ball for a minute and then, like, you know, he got uh, he got tired of the politics yeah, and baseball and skated and the and Damn. found wrestling. You don't think that, that this guy would have the same uh, treatment that Ric Flair currently has? Because I yeah, mean, there's he's certain, a legend, Macho. Yeah, that's a what I'm legend. saying. Yeah. If he was still around, like I, I'm pretty For sure, sure. Benny oh, the Butcher would have had him in like his song where he like I think he named it. After oh well, him, I mean, but, look, Macho Man's been referenced in songs in hip hop yeah. songs. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Not I mean, even currently, like by some of the new guys. Oh that's yeah. why I'm like he oh, would yeah. be having yeah, that because because Macho Man had Flair. Yeah, he not Ric Flair. He just had flair. True that. Yeah. He was. He was. He had as much flair as Ric Flair. Because when you think about, look, what did Ric Flair do when he came out with his his luxurious, you know, yeah. come into the ring robe, right? And he would flex it out with all the jewels <laughs> and all the all the shiny, you know. They both were doing the same bag. That's they were doing the same thing because Macho would come in with something just as extravagant. Yes. Correct. You know who gets a lot of love in, in today's rap scene that blows my mind? Uh, Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase. Million dollar the man. Million dollar man. Yeah. For some reason, he, he, I hear him in a lot of little homies rap songs. Because he like, represents Dude. money. Exactly. It's in the today's way, era. It's the way that the golden dickhead, get, you know, <laughs> used to get referenced back in the day. I'm living Trump. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the golden dickhead. Yo, wow. everybody was Trump. Yeah. And yeah. Then they, Trump they, became they, president they, and nobody was Trump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember he showed up um before all the politics and stuff like that. We were at a um Eminem show at Roselands before it flipped to whatever it is now. It was one of the last big gigs there and Eminem was doing something. And it was around election time, but like this dude wasn't even in that. This was like Eminem doing a play on politics, but it's a show, right? Mm -hmm. And he showed up, and he was getting love from everybody in there. We made Trump. Damn. Yeah. You got to remember, Trump came through our community, the poor communities. Remember, like, he was on Oprah. He wasn't, yeah. He yeah. wasn't on no big, like, they yeah. didn't mess with Trump. We pretty much gave Trump his popularity. We cared about well. We, we yep. spread that, and, you know, it's weird to see it now, but I remember being little, Trump was this icon status symbol for any yeah. black person that came from where, a poor person actually. And, and, <laughs> and, you know, his wealth is what people wanted to, you know, aspire to yeah. and, and strive to, right? And I think that's why, you know, now you're hearing guys like Ted DiBiase because in, you know, he ain't really balling like that, yeah. but that was his character on, on, in, in the WWE throughout is that I'm a billionaire. I'm a baller. Yep. I'm Ted no, back, Biasi. Back, back then, managers was important. Like, yeah. They yeah. played a big role. Yeah. They he played had a Virgil. big role. He had Virgil as bodyguard. Yeah. bodyguard. Yeah. And, and, you know, so, like, people that grew up off of, you know, like, in hip-hop that grew up off, off of watching wrestling... Oh. They'll reference Ted DiBiase because he represents money. You know, yeah. to add on to the thing where he said, he's like, yeah, you guys made him big. He kind of returned their favor. He got like Travis Scott out of like, uh, what is it like? You know, he was, the, he looked out Rocky. for hip hop people. Yeah. He got like, he got, well, a, I don't I know if he, he did. I think he looks out for I mean, famous he, people. He, yeah, I, I don't think he but did. I mean, he, that he, part. He, he did, he did take out like, two if, if you're, he did, he did something for Kodak. If you're That's famous, sure. yeah, yeah, he looked that. I was he did crazy. That. I still think that. Yeah. That Travis Scott thing, I don't know. Dude, if he threatened he, them with war. He was like, yo, I'm going to blow this. I'm going to blow some stuff up if you don't let the homie out. He's a celebrity. Yeah. So if you're a celebrity, yeah. you're probably in. You got him. a chance. Yeah, like so he just whatever's popping. But I was that's a great point. The manager, like manager Paul Bearer, a big role, Paul Bearer really yeah, redefined rest, that. Rest Ooh. in peace. He was yeah. one of them. Yeah. That's the best. Him and yeah. The Undertaker, right? Yeah, yeah, that's just the best. He was, yeah. His it, name it, is it, Paul Bearer. Bearer. Paul Bearer, yeah. Oh, and <laughs> that, was, that was great. With that the urn? Yeah. yeah, with the urn. Well, but you know who else was dope was Jimmy the Mouth of the South. Mouth yeah. of the South. Jimmy Hart. Foundation. Them you two know. guys, probably the two best. Oh, yeah. And can we also give it up for uh, Bobby the Weasel? 
Bobby, 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 Lou Albano, Bobby Heenan. Damn it! Yeah. I'm That's slipping. Three, I'm dude. slipping yeah. all over this. That's either 15 or three shots, dude. I'm yeah. doing. I'm gonna do a <laughs> shot and Ted flip. Yo, right, who, get who off was me. the manager? <laughs> the like the the ch- Japanese guy. Something. Oh, Mr. Fuji. Mr. Mr. Fuji. Mr. He was, yeah, he, was a, yeah. he was a ill man. He was good too. Yeah, he was. Dope. He was ill. He managed. Uh, who was but I think that's the bridge between us, you know, the streets and mainstream America. Yeah. Yep. We all this. That's why it's important in hip hop, and it really just transpires because that's really where we all as people here just become fans of this one thing. It right. ain't a lot of things we're all fans of. Right. This one thing. Everybody loves. Hey, that that's crazy people. because you're absolutely right about that. That that we are, it, a lot of their characters resonate with us one way or another. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. like uh, the way that uh, Stone Cold resonated, Man. right? The yeah. anti-hero. Yes. Right. He wasn't like the good guy, good guy, but he wasn't the bad guy. Right. You know what I mean? And he like you know went against the the heel. Yes. You know what I mean? The villain. Yeah. Even when he was like, I don't give a hell. I don't give a. Yeah. I don't yeah, care about this company. I don't care what any of y'all think. <laughs> but, yeah. He made but, beer look cool though. When I was a yeah. kid. Man. Like yo, I wanted. I wanted yeah. to drink so bad just because I wow. saw that, bro. Wow. <laughs> well, that was. That's not necessarily a <laughs> like, good thing. That's a lot though. <laughs> like I wanted. To, I was like, yo. He does it all the time. I want to see what's up. He does make it look pretty cool. Why can't I do that too? You know. Uh, then I tried beer, and it was like when I was younger, I was like, "Oh, this is not for me." <laughs> yeah, taste it hits different back then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right now, you, you know, let's bring it. But you know, back then, that Heineken did not taste good. No. <laughs> D- the, you know, to speak on what you just spoke on, uh, V, the anti-hero is the thing right now. I think I see more common. Do you watch the? Do you keep up with like the WWE right now? No, not at all. See, no. Yeah, there's a guy, I mean, Roman Reigns. I know, oh, I know he, he is. is. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> he's, he gone, is, he's gone from good to bad to good to where it's like kind of where They're you They're trying to figure it out. Yeah, they don't know exactly, but it's kind of, he's the anti-hero where it's like people hate on him, but he always comes to end up doing the right thing and helping the right person out at, yeah. you know, well, that, during that, a match. Or what they're trying side. to do is put him over. They're trying to market this dude and and put him over because realistically... He's the guy they see, you know, holding the weight. Right. They can't, they can't remake the Rock, man. Like they, they, well, it's his but cousin, that, no, guys, like, guys, like he, he kind of fits the profile, well, bro. Like, well, look, guys like Hogan, the Undertaker, cause yeah. like that dude is yeah, legendary. He's one. Like Pro- that, pioneers, bitch. Yeah, pioneers. He might be the first anti that I really think was super set. Undertaker Correct. was like a heel. Yeah. He was a heel, and then he turned into a a good guy, just liked a, it. A, a, a baby face, as they call him. Andre the Giant too, and then they flap, flopped him back to a heel, back to a. I mean, he's been all over the spectrum, yeah. but I mean, you know, he was, he's like the last real star, yeah. star, mm. star. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, There's like some that like, I guess you could say they're like are, are iconic, but not as made a big impact as those in the past. Like you know, you have people that put their, uh, you know, their stats up there, like Rey Mysterio. Like a lot of the younger generation, they they're like right off the bat. A lot of them know him. Like the last 10, 20 years. Those kids know him. Yeah. John Cena, that's like their Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Yeah. Man, like the fuck? Oh, John Cena's huge, right? Yeah, like Brock, like Brock Lesnar. They, that's another person they, they look up to. He was in UFC, right? Wasn't he, he just Yeah, in, Brock he got Lesnar was good. He got He was out. super dope. For roids? Yeah, you know. No, he just was too you know violent. Like, crazy. Too violent? Yeah. Just the other day, I, I was watching the, the Royal Rumble um, where, um, what's his name? Uh, Rick. What's his name? Roman Reigns. Yeah, yeah. He, he won it, so... I was like, yeah, they're trying to put him over. They they need a star bad. I was I was talking to the homie. Right, what is that? <laughs> so this is explain to him what this it, is. while I finish. It's, it's like a gravity bong. Yeah, but it's ha- like you smoke hash out of it like wax. Yeah. So you, it's like an automatic email. It heats it up by itself, and it pretty it that works almost so like a lung. Down, flip, so like you, you just all you're doing is just taking the. Who the fuck came up with that? G pan. Yeah, <laughs> stunning glass. It's just, it's just a, somebody sitting around thinking shit up. I owe ten because, like, you know, we didn't tell you, um, but at the beginning of the show, like the first thirty minutes, we do a non, a non uh, curse challenge. Um, I fucked up many times, so uh, I owe ten right there and a shot. Why, why would so I still gotta do the uh, shot. Oh, so you can't cuss? Now we now, now we, we can. can. Yeah, we're thirty passing. minutes is the fuck up. So you know we good now. Yeah. Now we're like. Oh, we didn't well, tell you that. that so. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Frick that. That is pretty cool, though, right there. 
Yeah, Mike's. so Thank this right so here, this this piece right here, we put the concentrate in, and it allows us just to do continuous flips so we don't got to be reloading every fucking time. Let me ask you something. As somebody that's been as early into this movement now as you, because, like, you know, growing up to your stuff, you know, we know exactly you always represented this. How do you see it now, like, now that the landscape is fully... It's not fully developed, but it's as developed as the underground could ever let it at this point. How do you feel seeing it all? I mean, it's good to see where where it's gone to because I mean, we knew the possibilities, but like they got a they they still got work to do on how they carve this out to make it fair for the operators as well as the consumers. Cuz I mean, yeah, we got legalization and all that stuff. We got medical, but taxation's fucked up. And, you know, they're constantly adding these new regulations that cost us as the operators more money to operate. And with taxes, you know, the margins to for profit, they're hard, you know what I mean? So it's like we got to keep it moving in, in some sort of way and keep people coming through the doors and coming to the dispensaries because, I mean, just the way that they tax this shit is awful. So um, every time I see Wiz currency burner i just automatically think of you every time and that's a cold <laughs> well, imprint you, to sir. have in the mind you know what i mean yeah, you like you. <laughs> oh, this is the original stoner in the culture yeah i mean we as, as cypress hill goes yeah i mean like we were putting up that flag higher than most at that at the time when we came out there was guys before us in in, sure. in jazz Music like especially in the, reggae, the 40s, yeah, and reggae. Do you see it like a family tree almost? Because like you know, I swear, it I is. Like that's kind of like, yeah. but I do though. It is. No, but like I, the, I, I, I kind of visualize the way you described it. Yeah. Like you know, the is where it starts. They see Cypress Hill. Because in hip hop, like you got to remember, like we was like the way we see it now. It wasn't like that. Like I used to sell weed. You know, what I mean, in high school, I had some really dope spots with stress, like great yeah. stuff, great ideas, and it was it was like pretty much like selling crack. Yeah, I mean, like we publicly, sold. yeah, we sold. it was like a real perception. So to watch somebody press, you know, Cypress Hill press that movement when it was frowned upon, and then now it's in this really space of purgatory. To me, it's not completely, it's not completely righteous, but it's like purgatory where it's yeah. like, yeah, I don't know quite how to feel. And then like now it's super like, and then to see like, damn, they was the first ones on that. But you're right. Every time I see burner, every time I see Wiz currency. Anybody in that stone or tree, I always think about, damn, this shit came from Be Real Inside Cypress Hill. I'll tell you what, I think little by little, everywhere's getting with the shit. I think once once every state gets with the shit and it's legal across the board, the taxes will definitely be a different story. You know what I mean? But right now, you know, like that that is the one of the biggest problems and just the constant like adding of different regulations. Because I, I think some of the folks that, that are um, the regulators for the state of California as it relates to the cannabis industry. I, I don't think they know as much as they should about the industry. To, you sound to, like you got work left. <laughs> yeah, I think they need to recruit some people. I was just saying this yesterday or the day before that they need to recruit people from the industry that have been here for like 20 years doing with and seeing the growth and how things really work. Veterans. Yeah, so hope, that so hope that for be real. <laughs> this might be a new position oh, that we should talk week, about. Dude. That's the when third you really time think about week. it, though. Oh yeah, the it? third time this week. The governor be it real. Makes makes sense. Sense. Or it's Governor Green Thumb. Let's go. Come on. Yeah, that's that's makes sense though, low key, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense though. Dude. All the signs are pointing. <laughs> it's, it's time. It's when you were talking, Shane, in the chat earlier, goes, "Here we go again, Congressman Be Real." Oh my God, no politics. Politics, man. No fucking way. Uh, You're not even gonna have to do steps for you to like drop. <laughs> like that's that. where you really get gray. <laughs> yeah, you like I'm only a yeah. little gray right yeah. here, but you get into politics. Oh, you feel yeah. So if you I'm look in Barack, she yeah. was like the first. Yeah, yeah. He went in there, you know, <laughs> regular. You know, and then came out. Ball. Time he came out, burnt silver, silver. Just totally, just like you just saw him. Like, I said, let me show you how much stress this 20 thing. years older. Hey, you, you, know, they, say, you don't want this job. <laughs> no, you think they don't. watch you bone in the White House? Because, yeah, you know, they have to watch everything. Yeah, like, of course they so do. You think like they some, wouldn't? 
No, I'm just saying. So you think there's somebody that's watching him? Is like, look, man, the well, president's gonna fuck. Security cameras think, everywhere. Think Biden yeah, getting sure. pussy? No, not yeah, him. No, I'm just saying, like, I don't see the, 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 the president that were able to, you know, you know, be conscious and shit. You know? Look, I can't see it. I don't want to see it. I don't even want to imagine. Like, I bet you they got like mad Bill Clinton tapes and shit. Hey, I would christen every room if I was president. Like, we do it. Yeah, who cares if they got the video on it? Because it's the president. Show out her. You got to show out. Why look, not? they look it right now. I'm president. You're my wife. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's give go. them a show. Hey. At this point, though, that's all missionary in the White hey, House. After <laughs> Trump, was, Trump was probably the last president that didn't have no missionary going on in the last six. For sure. Oh, man. For sure, Bush <laughs> and Clinton was missionary with their wife. Uh, <laughs> for sure, yeah. they was missionary. That'd be a good bet. Yeah, uh, that'd be a but good Trump, bet. Trump, sick ass is probably the last like doggy style. Probably with got food. Just probably crazy. got peed yeah. on in the way. Uh, yes, <laughs> food. He probably got. Yeah. He probably Trump, got yo, peed on in Trump, there. Trump never even stayed at the White House. Man. He, yeah, got, his, cool, he got his penthouse in New York. Oh, yeah. I'm telling <laughs> you, he, he said it was too cheap. I'm not fucking with y'all. We'll go there, <laughs> sign, yeah. sign some uh, papers, and be yo. out. <laughs> the white anti white person. <laughs> funny, Trump. Funny man. He really is hilarious. That is true. He would just probably just show up, take Air Force One, take sign some papers. Pictures, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah it's it's another private jet. Oh, yeah, he's going through some shit right now, boy. Oh, man. yeah. Well, didn't they, like, not find anything? Isn't he cool? Well, well didn't he use the, didn't he plead the Fifth of Amendment, like, 400 that, and something? Yeah. Yeah. too. <laughs> we got to take <laughs> They talk about him. Anyway. I was just going to the streets. Hey, 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 let me ask you this, uh, Glasses. You still street racing? Yeah. How did you get into that? My father. Your father was a racer too. Yeah, my whole life. Um, five, four, five, six years old. Man. He worked on cars too, huh? He owned a tow truck and drove tow trucks, but he just was into speed. They era was in the fast cars. Yeah. And um, what was his car that he drove? '68 Camaro, but he had a lot of different stuff. Ooh. But that yeah, was his main. A, that was the one he gave me. Oh, that was, yeah. So. You got baptized with that car. Yeah, that was the one. You know what I mean? Baptizing speed. Yeah, it's um. It's super great. Like it's it's one of the what's funny is it's, it's one of the dopest cultural exchanges. Like I, I know so many different cultures from this, and this is one place where everybody exists. It's, it's something like Fast and Furious, except without the pretty girls and right. the nice outfit <laughs> and all the foreign cars, because that just you'll get beat on real bad. But yeah. it, it's dope. Like it's it's one of the best experiences I ever been into. You be watching uh, Street Outlaws and all that? No, it's just kind of corny. It, that shit is fast though. It is fast though. That right? shit will kill you. It's straight away, right? Yeah, but they they stuff is just a bit corny to me. Yeah. Um, like they shit talking is whack. Like yeah. Street racing is a lot of shit talking, but they shit talking is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Super country. But sport. it's more about the racing. They shit fast though. Yeah. Like, it, but they couldn't drive those cars on our streets either because yeah, no. where they racing those cars, it's a ton of rubber. Dan, if you look on the street, you can see rubber. Where they didn't burn rubber for. You know, two, three hundred feet, four, five hundred feet out here. You have any of them cars that they had, and you try to put it on the street? No way. It'll yeah. never hook up. It'll be spinning the whole time. It just won't work out. But it's corny. It's like super hicky. Yeah. Like hicks and shit. But it's it's cool to watch every now and then. It, yeah, it's crazy. The type of shit they talk to each other. It is yeah. kind of corny. Oh yeah. But, but the, street racing is shit talking though. It's a shit. I would imagine. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's how I got. That's how I got really. You know, that's why hip hop worked out for me. A lot of it is street racing. It's like, oh, you can't, you ain't gonna be able to pop this shit like I could pop this shit. Yeah. Have you come up? Like, have you, like, you know, obviously you race for like Pink Slip in certain situations, but like, no, nah, everybody really No? Does. That's the TV. That's more. Really? I, I, I don't know. I've heard some. You just thousands. racing for money at the I, yeah, Thousands and thousands, a thousand, tens and twenties and thirties. I don't know. I knew somebody that got a car. I was like, you really want this car? And he's like, yeah, bro. He's like, the dude had to sign this shit over. Yeah, that's like some fat. That's happened with Fast and Furious. Nobody raced for no goddamn car. They don't yeah. want nobody's car. You want their money. You but, want their money, yeah. Um, so how, how does that work? Like you win and you get your money, or somebody's holding the money, or um, you usually let a trusted party hold the money. It's always some what shit if, when it's time you know, to pay up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know what like, there's always gonna be some something. Yeah. So how does that challenge even come about? Like, does someone just see you and just like, yo, did they just ask you, or you just if you see that someone, do you like hit them up? Like, how does that even? So it depends. Different scenes do it different ways. Some people see each other and they just be talking shit and two people start talking shit and then they want to race. Uh, yeah. Sometimes people sit in the back and be, you know, they building their car, they got it together and they looking at the right person to try to race. Uh, so some is super professional, super thought out, and some is just spur of the moment. Most of it is shit talking. Um, Most times you really not going to see a ton of races, but you're going to hear the funniest shit in the world just hanging out. 
Ah. Uh, um, but it's it's weird. Is it? And it's about reputation. It's about reputation too, right? Yeah, like any other poor sport. Like yeah. Any other sport. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's super reputation. Super. Um, every I haven't street raced in about ten years. Um. It's been a long time. When I signed the cash money, I couldn't street race. That was like in the contract. No way. I did this MTV, you heard it here first. And uh, this was like in 2005 and six. The MTV used to have this thing, you remember called You Hear It First. Yeah. Yep. And I had my race car on there. Huh. And um, I went down the street in it for him and I grabbed the unit and the hood flew off because I didn't put the pins in the, you know, in the hood pins. <laughs> yeah. And they thought it was so much power that it just blew the hood off. <laughs> and baby awful. and them seen that shit, they was like, yo, you can't, you know, Birdman like Slim, like, yo, you can't be doing this shit, though. You can't do this. You gotta <laughs> stop. So that stopped me for a long time. They didn't want you to risk your life. Yeah, which it really wasn't as bad. But it I looked just, bad. It looked crazy. To them. You gotta think, because when I, when I grabbed the unit, I hit the nitrous, <laughs> it kind of lifted up. But the hood just didn't have hood pins, but it looked like it just blew the hood off of the car. They was like, oh, that's out. Holy shit, Damn. Dude. Like, that's out, G. The, the theatrics were everything. Yeah. Is this and the I car had right no here? idea. And I remember people seeing that. They was like, man, that thing is fast. It didn't knock the hood off. Is oh. that it? Cra yes. That's exactly what it is. You still have that car? Yeah. I gave it to my little brother. That's Joe. awesome. Man. What are you whipping now? Uh, I got a 66 Impala. I haven't even started to you know, drive. Well, I started the drive train. Um, the trans is done, converter's done, the motor's just about done, so I just gotta put it together and then see what I need to get it right. You ain't putting switches in it, right? You're putting, Not keeping this it all street, like rod shit, right? <laughs> Straight up, no, that's meant to race. Yeah. Uh, I'm, we doing a new car, I got a 67 Impala. That's what I'm really more focused on of dealing with it. I just haven't messed with it. Yeah. That's that's crazy, man. I gotta wow. put together horsepower. all this other stuff. That's, yeah, the horsepower and... Damn. Man. It, like, what, the engine you could put in that 66, man, too. Man, the engine I built for this one's particular is a 385. It's it's a bet I got with my buddies, um, Hot Dog, Richie, all my street race partners about it. This big, heavy car going eight seconds with this small motor in it. Right. And I'm going to win that bet, then I'll figure out something else. Yeah, because cause the, they are heavy. They huge the heavy. body is heavy. Yeah, yeah. Do you only race, like, American cars? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm super anti foreign everything. Well, would you would you say like it's is there like a whole just big difference or is there like a side that's normally faster? Would you say like foreign cars are faster? Yeah, domestic cars are faster. I mean, but they're meant they're just so, heavier too. Yeah, though. yeah, foreign cars are lighter so but they don't make as much horsepower. But um there's a lot of people that mix them up, you know what I mean? Some people was putting V8s in in different cars that's from overseas. Datsun was people favorite. Yeah. You take a Datsun and put a V8 in it, like a 240Z, that was like the, the thing greatest ripped. combination. <laughs> yeah. Even even Toyota Corollas. Yeah, that was a thing, too. Dodson. I've seen some of them for sale recently. They were really expensive, too. Yeah. Wow. They had a big engine compartment. You could slap a different engine in there and Jay -Z? go. Did, did Datsun become Nissan? Yeah. Some of the, actually, the later on, the, the Nissans, the later Nissans end up having V8s in them. Whoa. Yeah. Some people put V8s in them. Yeah, look at that right there. Mm. Yeah. That was a fast yeah, one. That was right the there. one. That was the one. That was the one you wanted as a street racer. Yes, indeed. That was the motherfucker right there. My Uncle Gizmo yeah, had so one of them. He wrecked in it. it let me crazy. ask you, when, when you're doing them races, like what's the speeds that you guys hit, man? Like the... The last time I street raced, I think we ended up going 149. Damn. Damn. So zero to like about 150 and like. And how far is it? A quarter mile? It's quarter mile, 13, 20 feet. 1,320 feet. Ooh. Man. Yeah. Ooh, we Damn. Pretty dumb. Have you ever had a close call? Uh, my brother that just passed away, he wrecked. My mm. god brother twin, he wrecked before. Oh, wow. And his car went right and he wrecked it to a park diesel. Oh man! But it's not like the TV. The thing is, cause it's not like the TV. Like, right. It's not like we letting it. It's a really controlled scene. Yeah. Like nobody's racing light to light. Like it's nobody's. No cars can come by. Like this is different. This ain't like you know how the news. Like the street. Oh, they racers, always put sauce on it. Yeah, it's not nowhere near close to the news. Like you couldn't even possibly let other cars come by. So you might block off a couple intersections. Um, it's funny if you when y'all get some time look on YouTube. It's a a YouTube page called Counter Speedway. It's a lot of races, and we used to race right there forever. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wasn't there like a strip on Santa Fe or something like that? Or yep, right off Alameda, like yeah. one of the split right there. I yep. used to race wow. that. Too, so that was the spot. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God. Yeah, that's the spot. Yeah. Yeah. A that's lot of races up. went down back then. A super dope race I remember happened over there when I was a kid, and it was for like fourteen thousand dollars. But this Damn. is like. Ninety or eighty nine, it felt like a million dollars. You know, you got man, you young, you nine, yeah, that's all eight years old. This seemed like a million dollars. Yeah, it was counting money out on the trailer, <laughs> and it was nice. just money across the trailer. It's fourteen thousand dollars now, but yeah, that that time Back then you never it was seen like, that. Holy shit, it's fourteen thousand, and that race was so crazy. Yeah, it's wow. like the greatest race, street race I ever seen. Yeah, there was a lot of a lot of races went down over there at that spot. Man. Yeah, so and man. I imagine it still happens, right? Yeah, right now. Um, they got more places now that they race, and they kind of go different places. But a lot of it has been cut in half to 660, like eighth mile. Yeah. But 135th and Main is still there. Like, if you go right now, like, if they were to Google search 135th and Main, like the people upstairs, you could look and you'll see rubber where they just laid down rubber right now, you know, on Main, across yeah. 135th. Fresh. Damn. Keep that tire stuck down. It's the shit. Yeah, man. It's got to be like, you know, like that, that it, having like f fucking um, exhilaration through your fucking body when you're hitting that kind of speed in a quarter mile like that with, and, and you guys, you guys use nitrous, right? Yeah, yeah. It, but they got turbos and superchargers. All that and shit. It, nothing better, nothing's better than me than nitrous. Turbo is better like if you're driving your car and you just want to have access to power. It's less... It's supposed to be less volatile to the motor, but man, nitrous right? yeah. just comes out of nowhere. It's turbo, like, you can feel it. Like turbo, you know, you're yeah. driving your turbo. Shit. You'll, you'll feel it kick. Yeah. Damn. That nitrous is something different. Just like, what? yeah, it's like, it's unbelievable. It's a, it's a really great feeling. 149, though. That's <laughs> yeah, crazy. You're going to be feeling like you're flying, boy. Nitrous is a great like, feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of nitrous. <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, yeah, you should, that nitrous. <laughs> it's funny because we... <laughs> you know, I, used to be, I never knew why these regular people... I was like, they got the worst bottles in the world. I'm like, you know, a regular nitrous bottle for a race car is like a... You know, NOS makes it a really popular one. That, yeah. Like they say in Fast and Furious, they call it Nas. But yeah. that's really just a company in nitrous, you know, in the nitrous business. You come with this nice blue bottle, blue... You know, they have Nitrous Express, Yellow, all these really nice bottles. And some young dude come in this motherfucker with like a medical, yeah. look like he's filling up balloons. I'm like, you got to buy them at the shop. Like, I didn't know why they had, I was like, what the fuck? Are, you know, I, I obviously I didn't know what the fuck was going like, on. What you going to do with that? Where I'm from, they just smoke Sherm. Yeah. They just might smoke rocks. Right. You know, regular urban drugs and they right. just coming in with these dragging in these long <laughs> like they stole them out the hospital like why do you have that that ain't gonna fit in no car that's funny not a party without balloons yeah I didn't know that, that wow. shit is crazy <laughs> the oh, shit that yeah. does to a car you put that in your body you fuck crazy yeah yeah that's crazy it goes away is it I don't know. Oh yeah, <laughs> it goes away. we've got them like like I like I have like one of the big blue tanks. Like I got that at like the shop that I go to, and I'm like I get to see badass car when I walk in there. But it's like man, I'm like it's that like you're right about how, when you see some people turbo. fill it up and turbo. Like, how, how crazy is that? Right, Hello. the same shit <laughs> that's used to go extra fast, fast. extra. Extra, extra fast is the same shit <laughs> you filling balloons up with. You tried it? Yeah, we party here before with it. I brought two Holy for, my, shit. for my birthday last year. I had two tanks, bro. Like we had like a whole get down, bro. It was like, yeah. hey, I'll tell was, you what. There's, it was a good time. There's this um this billionaire doctor, right? He's like a genius dude. He swears by it. Like he would send people to go buy tanks for him bring them back, and then he would have nitrous parties. And just, you know. See, but there is a difference, though. Like, with the medical grade stuff is that the, tank, well, yeah. the tanks that do come in there, they have, like, a, they have like certain valves, and, and like they release only a certain amount because you're not allowed to just go full out. Full blown. And they man. also cut it with a little bit of oxygen, too. That, <laughs> I mean, you know, they got to cut the drugs. You, you better cut <laughs> it. Because <laughs> yeah, technically, you can you can overdo it, and that's when you pass out. But yeah. you, you pass out before... 
you know. Yeah. How did you get introduced to that? Like, so uh, we would go to fire parties, and then there would be. What's a fire party? I, so like, I went to school in the '90s, like high school. That was my era, and I remember just like being being a uh, passed up pastor. Like after like school ended, there would be like uh, flyers being handed out to everybody. It's like, oh, there's a party going down. There'd be like party crews, and then each of those party crews would show up. And the ones that were throwing it would have like big ass tanks and they would be like, oh, yeah, three for five or like, you know, five for ten. And you just buy the balloons and you, it changes your voice into like very deep. I've seen it in the movie. And it just it just it makes you feel good. That is crazy. Man, the yeah. original name was was Laughing Guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I thought that was like helium. Oh, it's helium, helium. voice without. Yeah. yeah. That's Night always the opposite. Helium makes you like chickmunk voice. This makes you like. Hey, baby, hey, really? Yeah, bro. Oh, this man. Is, yeah. It'll be like so people. Well, that's what they was doing? Girl. At all like the high school yeah. parties when I was younger. And like that's. that's you ever tried Sherm? That, that is nah. the trip though. Nope. Nah. That is the trip, though. That he <laughs> you ever try Sharon, OG? Nah. You ever try Sharon B? No, no. Don't, fuck shit. Don't lie, be real. Shit. <laughs> I haven't. Yeah, that's Greg I've tried said, a lot of shit, but I didn't try Sharon. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, you could miss, but yeah. I, miss. <laughs> but I was thinking, I was like, I didn't know where they was doing these nitrous parties. I was like, I heard about that, but I never went to a Quincy party. Yeah, with bro. <laughs> yeah. For uh, real? They do, yeah, listen, bro. Like, hey, all those, I, like I, parties during high school. I was doing a photo shoot with the smoke box over the by the the sixth street bridge there's like the um this off street that's just below the bridge where these railroad tracks go I'm shooting there <laughs> and you can hear these dudes down the street in their car that's dangerous though they're doing the thing <laughs> and they and they're laughing and their laughs are like <laughs> <laughs> What's that called? It, it was hilarious. Like the, it. The, the voice change? No, no. Like, what is it called when you're doing nodding it? Nah. Nazi? Oh, because that's fast and fierce. Nazi? Nazi? It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah. it would be like, Yo, is there gonna be Nazi? Yeah, we're all gonna Nazi it. Get some balloons. Oh, then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, get, get oh, 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 to the balloons, my friend. <laughs> and that's why if you ever see like like somebody that doesn't look like they're throwing a birthday party, going to a party balloon yeah, store. Yeah, right. They're gonna get those, balloons, especially <laughs> if they're getting like, cause I go I go to stores like I don't even know, go to Party City, bro. Like I go get like the car dealership balloons, the ones that take all the big air. Remember like the ones, I, I've fallen asleep no. on top of those. Like, well, yeah. Just. Dude, he's brought, in, see, dude, he's brought in some tanks before and just balloons that have just been so big that you're just like, oh what? my he just walks God. around and has like blast. Yeah, pretty ridiculous. We've all like tried it with the exception of Be Real and Psycho yeah. Last. No, uh, I, I've uh, been there. What about Huffing? No, nah, that has that has more like paint. No, nah, it's, like, it's it's almost like, I remember when I did, when I did try smelling it because I liked the smell of it. I remember, like, it just, it kind of made you not out, like, and it was no control. Oh, yeah. It was, so it was, like, that too much of a chemical rush. Yeah. yeah. That shit will knock you the fuck I did try it once, though. That's why I was like, oh, man. This I is remember cool. when I was in school, and it'd be certain homies used to be sniffing markers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that, like, bro, why are you sniffing a marker? Makes you feel crazy. I mean, it's, it's, it's like that smell, like the acetone smell just yeah. smells good like for some spray reason. spray can. Yeah. yeah. You want to get high? You, you enjoy it when you're a kid. You're like, I want some more of this. I was looking well, at this interview. Well, uh, Tookie's wife, um, it's on Kev Max platform, super dope platform. But and she was talking about how they were popping Red Devils in middle school. What yeah. is that? What's that? It's like a super old drug, it's way before yeah. most of our time, but it's like a upper. Um, it's, a, it's a professional name for it, but they was like super popular, like how Balloons or Sharon was. Red Devils was big, and my, how all of the original dudes that started like Crips. Cripping and shit, they was just popping red devils in middle huh. school. Like, pills? I didn't know nobody that got high in middle school. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Same here. Were they pills? Same here. Yeah, yeah I don't. Were they, they pills? pills? Yeah, they were pills. It was a pills. Uh, sleeping pill. Oh, damn. Devils? It was, it was, it was a, a big upper? pig. Yeah. It's uh, it, it says it right here. Um, I don't know what it's oh, called. Oh, yeah, reds. Yeah. I was setting yeah. it. Look at that. They're huge. That was like a. Sleeping that was like. Or as a the thing. Barbituate. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was like the Vicodin of that time, huh? Reds. Ah, oh, reds. Yeah. Was, was that, like, was that what that was? Red. Like the Vicodin yeah. of the time? Yeah. Mm, I don't think it was. I don't think Vicodin. it was like Vicodin. Vicodin ain't gonna put you to sleep. Or like Norco? That'll put you to sleep right there. It was, like a, it was in that family, I think. That's crazy. With some vodka. 
Human beings oh, are fucking like vacuum, man. Yeah, the but human body can endure a lot. I gotta watch somebody sniff nitrous. I gotta see. You don't sniff it. Life. You gotta just inhale it. it. Yeah, you inhale. I need. I need to watch somebody do it. Like, Let's I do the balloon. See that well, I'll invite oh. you next time we have a balloon party. Oh, this guy's. <laughs> yeah. This guy will sure. demonstrate yeah. for you gladly. Hey, yeah. <laughs> oh, we, oh, we got some video. Here's the other yeah. one. I oh, because I don't want nobody to be sad. Yo, be real, and you know he didn't do the thing. So here's the other oh. thing. And there was there there, there was that time though. <laughs> or like every day. No, but ah. you could. I was like, "Yo, man, it's starting to taste funny." I was like, "Oh, just sniff it then." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. then it was just like, it goes in through your nose. They like, oh man, it's like you could almost just breathe in more. Dude, yeah. you would just find him just like laid out, super smiley, and just singing, ha 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 ha, 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 ha. and just out of his mind happy. You, but the, oh, yeah, you, it changes that voice, but brings you that like deep bass voice you yeah. come back though and like like if you if you just do one balloon you come back in like 30 seconds a few minutes in, in a few minutes maybe like i've that. never got high yeah like off what nothing not even weed never oh shit. damn really never well that's good man i sold pretty much every drug except i never smoked no drugs do you drink never drank that's good that's business, right though hey that's yeah, good that's, business no, that's, that's not, not for nothing. Nobody know that, huh? They like, what the fuck? Not for nothing. Yeah. That's good business. It was all, it was I was all... going to ask. I'm going to be like, do you need a lighter? No, no, I'm going to take <laughs> like... this home because I got a good purpose for him. Right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, um, you've worked with a lot of a lot of cats, man. Who who would, who would you say is your favorite um, collaboration you did? The song or watching them work? Well, both. What, nothing was like working with Lil Wayne. Like yeah. I, I never seen no shit like that. You know, it's, it's crazy because people, you know, people ask me did Gilly. Like I wasn't around when Gilly was, you know, working with Cash Money. But nobody wrote Lil Wayne shit. Lil Wayne don't even write Lil Wayne shit. I watched Lil Wayne do 15, 16 verses in a day. He just sit right there, be smoking weed, drinking tea, huh. and just rapping. Like just coming up with it and then going there and laying it down. Like. So watching him work was like the craziest thing in the world to me. And um, you know what? I, I spent the whole summer with Teddy Riley. Hmm. I know that was weird. Like we did some stuff and it never came out. But watching him work was like. You like, learned a lot watching him you work. You never seen no shit like, like nobody could really fuck with him. I, like that summer fucked me up. You know what I mean? And that's dope. Wayne made me realize like I wasn't a good rapper at that point. And Teddy Riley made me realize I didn't know shit about music. Teddy Teddy's still <laughs> doing the the new Jack swing. He's just doing whatever. Like he could he's just better than everybody. Like Yeah. So so we look at basketball in two different ways. There's the guy that's the best professional player, and then there's a the guy that you really think could whoop everybody ass on the court. Right. Dr. Dre is the best professional producer in hip. You know, and, and, and pretty much in urban music to some degree, yeah, right? Right. Teddy Riley's the nigga one on one that nobody oh, breathing hey. air could fuck with. Right. Not, <laughs> not nobody. Yeah, he For knows. Real. He knows this shit. Like yeah. I watch him do scratches with a keyboard, <laughs> like a, a keyboard, cause a bin bar and a keyboard, cause it's scratching. <laughs> you know I mean, Teddy is like, I'll never forget that time. You know what I'm saying he be on some advanced shit. That's He's for dope. sure. I mean, always. He's the guy that you know. Did the beat for the show, Dougie Fresh and and Slick really? Rick? Yeah. yeah, and he never got yeah. credit. I did not know that he did yeah. the beat. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And yeah. it takes two. Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock. He's he nasty. Yeah. This is a better question for you. You work with more people at, at crazier levels. Who do you feel is the person? Did you ever go in the studio with somebody as an MC and you was like, "Fuck, like this motherfucker is really good." <laughs> when I got invited to do um the group group therapy thing with Dre and I found out like Nas and, and KRS and, and RBX were on that. That's when I was like, oh shit, I gotta step it up right here. Cause like my idols on this, this track and Nas was like the guy at that point, like that everybody's like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? And RBX, you know, solid sure. every time. So that, that, that kind of made me a little bit nervous. But it also helped me like step up. Like I had to step up to the moment because if I fold in that moment, I'm gonna sound like shit and nobody's gonna call me after. <laughs> you know here's, a, here's a crazier question somebody asked me, cousin, it's dope to be able to ask you this because you got so much fucking history with it. 
is there a song that comes in your mind where you're like, damn, this motherfucker served me, but you just didn't change your verse, but you hear it, you be like, this motherfucker served me. Um, well, you thought somebody performed better. I know it's a weird question for yeah. you to see, but. There, what was the song? Because there, there was one song where I was like, man, I wish I could have got that one back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was a good verse. Um, but I, I, like, I pride myself in, like, and you clean. You but, always but, been bring, super nice. I, 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 I bring in the business. If I'm like yeah. on a track with someone, I'm, a, I'm a set the pace on them real quick. Make them rewrite their shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there was one I can't remember if it was on a, on one of the Serial Killer albums with Exhibit and Demrick or or something like that. But like, yeah, there was one verse on one of them songs where I was like, man, I should have went back. You know, B.O.B. did that to me. I have a song called Knock It Out that Teddy worked on me with. And B.O.B., dog, like, he got airplanes and all these pop songs with all these pop people. And I have a song with him called Knock It Out. And I flip, like, this Bay Area classic, that same one LL Cool J used for Knock It Out. And uh, Mama said, Knock You Out. And I made a song called Knock It Out, and it's dope. And B.O.B., like, Body. clean me up. Bodied it, huh? And and like it's a fun, festive song. So you know it's really, you know, you let go. But like it was so much better and cleaner that I was like, and he was doing pop records. Yeah. So when he cleaned me up, I was like, son of a bitch. Like, and I hear the record <laughs> now, and I be like, damn man, this is why you got to be the shit every time because you never know right who gonna clean you up. And I, I, I right. every time I hear that Bob verse, I be like. This motherfucker made airplanes and he just cleaned me up like that. I'll did you? I tell, tell you, you what, when, when it's usually when when you're on a track, right, and you just sort of like write it, put it together like you're going through the motions. Okay, let me just get this shit done, as opposed to dissecting and saying, you know what, who else is on this track, <laughs> right? Like doing doing the diligence, like a. Hey, if Les hits me up and he's like, yo, hey, I need you to get on this track. All right, well, who's on it? Do you got the verses? Let me hear them. I be right? Big Daddy Kane. Uh, you know, and then I know, okay, what <laughs> level I have to bring it to. Right? But I, I, it, the way I started flipping it, you know, like when I get on a track after that, that particular song, like I, I always thought about it before that, but like it hit me in that moment that I, I had a slippage in the way I attack things as it relates to flipping verses and in, in, mm. in, in, in cameos and stuff like that. I always go in with the, I'm gonna fuck this up mentality to where you're, you're gonna have to rewrite your shit or I'm gonna make you consider it. Right, and in this one particular song, I didn't do that. I just sort of did like, okay, I'm, yeah, this is dope. Let me, I, but I didn't have that shit. Like, I'm gonna make whoever's coming behind me, you know, they're they're gonna have they're gonna have to bring some. I didn't look at it like that for that one time. So like, I always look at it like this: if I can't hear their verse first and know what out. they're bringing, I'm going all out. I'm going all the fuck out, and you got to keep up with me. You know what messes me up? What messed me up as an MC is when I became a record maker. Cause yeah, you, that's it, different. It, and as I started to produce ideas, not necessarily, like I can only play the bass now, but produce an idea and I wanted to make a better record, I stopped focusing on being like the greatest. I'm like, I need to make this a really prominent idea. You know, and y'all could all relate when you hear it. But the problem is, it slights you sometimes. Right. As it, like, I think only Quick has been able to maintain a certain level of right. super dope production and MCing, where right. I be like, "Yeah, yo, how you? That's that's like super nice for somebody." Like doing it himself too. Yeah, like actually writing his own shit. You feel me? And producing. Yeah, he got the great. He, get, he like super duper because you know producers tend to like when they be rapping, they just be like an instrument. So they just be getting cracking. You know what I mean? They oh, just I in seen, these crazy places. I seen, I seen DJ Quick in in New York, Chung King, like lock out the studio for like a week and keyboards and all kind of crazy shit. Oh, that dude's a he genius. He's a shit. I got to tell you, he's a genius, man. Like he, he don't is. get enough flowers for how he's Prince. fucking dope he is. Yeah. He's Prince. Yeah, like absolutely. Hip -hop I always say Dr. Dre. It's funny because I told Quick this. I was like, if Dr. Dre is Quincy Jones of the genre, you're Prince. 
Absolutely. You're like literally the inspiration that people don't talk about enough. That's right. real shit. Right. Like his style is hey, crazy. It's crazy. He could do it all. Yeah. One like, man band. This dude engineered a hip hop record. I can't remember whose, but it's under his real name, David Blake. Oh. Like he didn't use quick as, as in the credits. Tupac, All Eyes on Me. Yeah, there you go. Yep. But he's done a few, not just that one. That was oh. the biggest one. That was his biggest, but that's one of the ones he, like, he, when he had just started working over with Death Row, he went under his real name. Yeah, that was awesome. But yeah, that, that blew me away. Um, But he's one of the few producer people that rap that I feel like still maintains a super MC presence. Like, he doesn't just become an instrument and just flow. Like, he still, you know who else does that? Eric Sermon. Eric Sermon does that yeah, pretty good. Cool. Hey, man. Yeah, salute to Eric Sermon. Yeah, he's tough, though. He another one. Like, while I hear it, I mean, yeah, he getting off. But quick, I listen to quick rap, and I be like, yeah, you really good at rapping still to be a producer. Yeah. To be yeah. a great producer, too. Yeah. So that, that, that makes me slip. Hey. There are the handfuls. Psycho Leezy's one of them right yeah. here. Right there. Yeah. He gets that bar work in. Uh, you know, squeeze yeah. right there. I, I put the work in on the beats, m mostly the focus, but I have fun with the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's I, to be able to do both, man. That's, that's always crazy, that's especially dope. at a high level, though. Right. Not to cut you off, OG, but real shit at a high level. Yeah, like I, I don't know how y'all do it. Like just being a record maker makes me. Like, I have to be careful of MC. I'm like, ah, let me don't fuck this up because yeah. you start complimenting the instrument. She's like, let me wrap around that because I want people to hear this little shit. That's fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, songwriting and, and bar work are two different things. You could mix them up. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of them, like, M is good at mixing the bar work and song up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, it's, it's an art form to do that. And it's tough writing songs like that to have that that crazy bar work, but have it within a structure too and make sense. But like, you know, when you got to go at somebody, it's bars. It's not about the songs, yeah. right? I love when somebody else I get to go to the studio like, glass. I want a verse, perfect. Yeah, you know what I mean. But a lot of times too, like I hear where MCs ain't up on like really being dope, and they're just rapping. I'll just compliment their stuff to make a better song. Like that's another thing. Like I, when I first started rapping, I wasn't like I, I was in love with MC, but I wasn't in love with hip hop. Like the right. whole record aspect, everything it represented. But I did like the wittiness and being articulate, more articulate than somebody else on the record. So I was just, I'm finna kill him. Now I listen. If this stuff ain't that great, I'll be like, oh, I'm a compliment it. I'm gonna get off these bars. Yeah, you sort of have to do that. Yeah. To make a better joint. To make a better joint, cause yeah. like if you totally blow them out, it just sound crazy. It, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, and and that's that's real shit though. Like, cause a lot of artists don't consider that when they get on tracks with with cats. It's like, oh, I want to show how I'll wrap circles around this motherfucker <laughs> right here, <laughs> and then you end up fucking up the song. Horrible song. <laughs> Trying to be too complex because homie might be a little too simple, yep. or whatever it is. You know what I mean? And you got to find that in between to like you know make the song dope because mainly that's that's what you want to do make the song dope and if you do that you're gonna sound dope regardless uh, yeah whether you flexed on them or found a way to snap in to where it, there's like some cohesion you know what I'm saying and you lift the artist up right you just make it a, you're right you make it a much better experience yeah hell yeah. Dope. Yeah, because I found myself doing that too. Like I was trying to flex too hard on <laughs> certain songs, and I'm like, man, I shouldn't have did that. And then I found that in between, like flexing enough, and you know, st but staying complimentary to what the other homies doing, and and you know, the song in general, because it got a song sound like a song, not just beats with verses on them. Yeah, remember your first rap. Yeah, there, there's a couple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just, your first rap? Uh, I have it somewhere recorded. Yeah. I don't got like, it recorded. Like 88 or something. You just wow. pinning. <laughs> you yeah. just going. I, I wrote it, but I don't remember where the fuck it's at. But yeah. Bobo has it. I think that's what we. The reason I asked, I was talking to my homie and I was saying, because he asked me, he's like, man, hip hop is whack now. It's a lot. I was like, no, you just hearing everybody's first rap too early. Yeah, Ooh, you know what I mean? Like, wow. somebody wanted me That's to judge true. certain artists. They be like, "Oh, glasses, mad judge, blue face." 
I was man. like, man, this Oli Blueface 100th rap. Yeah. Like, I had did 200 raps before you heard my raps. Yeah. Right. I mean, it takes time to craft a style and, 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 and craft and hone the skills and all that shit. So, I mean, what, yeah. do, what do you enjoy more, do, making the music or, or spitting? Making the music now. It used to be spitting for me. I Man, I used to love MCing. Like a, and I don't think I was really a good MC initially. I thought I made pretty good songs naturally. Um, and then I went through this phase probably, like I, I pretty much started rapping in 2003. Then I got really, I wasn't good till probably about 2009, 10, 11, nah. 11. I don't think people heard my best MC stuff. Like, I got a whole project that's finished that I made in 2011 to 2012 that's like, like the bars is, like the whole structure how I was doing it was out of this world. Um, but I was I was saying that to um, so many artists, you're just hearing their first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth song, and it's just blowing up. And I'm like, yeah, it's like judging a kid at the playground, like you were judging NBA players. Like, it's not <laughs> I can't. That's why I don't judge artists no more. It's like you, yeah. I only could judge you if you've been in the business. Like yeah. If you've been around and I know you've been around, then I can start putting it up for you. But right. to judge you as an MC and this is like your first time you dribbled the ball. It's like yeah. It's like your sixth time on the court. You out there. It's gonna take a season or two. Yeah. I have to <laughs> wait. Get some work in. Need to wait a little bit. Put that yeah. work in, my. All right. It's that time. Let's go. What time is it? Could just hear better, you know, if you want to want to rock the headphones. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I don't even really rock the headphones. What do you mean? All right, we got a bunch of submissions in today. We got AM Art up in here saying, My girlfriend croquet and hand embroidered these for high and hungry and E Zone. That's tight. Look at that. Oh, of course he left. And he left. Looks like a donut. That's amazing. Excellent work. Cool that's job. Good. That's rad. Yeah, those things were good. Yeah, that's tight. Awesome. For true. We got AJ Sense up in here saying, Some drumsticks, potatoes, and some rice. Ooh. Saying it was bomb. Oh, man. Ooh. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> Looks good. You put that in a crock pot, it would work too, huh? Yeah, absolutely. This is where torture comes, glasses. <laughs> White yeah. plate. Everyone sends us food pics. Okay, yeah. Oh, my God. Mm. What is that? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, drumsticks, it, potatoes, and rice. And I think it's pilaf, right? Yeah, it looks like a pilaf right there. Pilaf rice. My brother does this stuff on Facebook, too. He called it rate the plate. Yeah. That looks crazy. I would, I would have left her house. I was on <laughs> that would have left her house. I'm I, not I really go a, home, a drum, drum, drumstick guy. I don't I know. Wanna you don't like drumsticks? Yeah, right. Uh, I like them because they come ready to eat. Like ready, you can just yeah. hold it. Yeah. You don't need a fork. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's easy. Yeah. Simple. I've been seeing all kind of. That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> they just somebody sent that to you? Yeah. This is yeah, what they do. They do. <laughs> Next one. And next up in here, we got, uh, let's see here, we got Ed G, and he's saying, what up, homies? All is good up here in the IE right now. I got some backyard boogie. Okay. Look at that. It is. It's a night, you know, hey, I'm just going to be a healthy girl right there, man. Mm. But tall. I'll tell you what, when she starts flowering, she's going to get heavy. You're going to have to prop her up somehow because she's already leaning. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when they get too tall, don't you have to snip them? Well, if you want them to bush out, yeah, you snip them early, but they didn't do that. How tall? What's the tallest tree you ever seen that was like a plant? About 14, 15 feet. And it was flowered? Yeah. Wow. Oh, that guy looked like a Christmas tree. It was crazy, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> wow. Sand tough. Dog grew it in his backyard. He didn't even know what it was. Someone what like the, the fuck? Yeah, they used to roll. We used to roll weed in his backyard, and <laughs> somebody threw the fucking seed. Some threw a bunch of seeds out there, <laughs> and like a couple of Holy couple shit. of them took. <laughs> and he didn't know because you know, like 
They would back water, then, yeah, yeah, yeah no, they water yeah. The, the, the sprinklers, would water the grass in the whole area, so it's getting water and it's growing. They don't even know till one of the one of the neighbors came over and was like, "Hey, man, nice plant, <laughs> nice plant. What, what do you mean? That's a weed plant." Wow, what? And it was flowering already. It was flowering already. It was time, like you know, they probably had a few more weeks nuggets. before they chop it. Yeah, nuggets, <laughs> nuggets, huge Bring nuggets. It. Because I mean, it's an outdoor plant, and it was like thirteen feet. It was like probably went to the to the top of their their uh, garage roof. Wow. That's good. Okay. He didn't even know. What he smoked weed. He smoked weed all the time. Didn't know what it looked like. But you know what's funny? <laughs> the, the the finished product, cause and the plant itself is it it is similarity, but it is different. It it don't it don't seem like it would grow that way. No, it doesn't. But look, here here goes an example of how tall Holy it could grow shit. if you let it. Wow. I mean, he's about five seven. This guy with his arm up. So that was about six three, six yep. four. Damn. Damn. Them girls are way up there, man. Damn. Uh, what did y'all do when y'all figured that out? Um, well, <laughs> when it was ready, they chopped it down, and dr dried it out, and you know they divided it up and smoked it out. Wow. Some of it, some of it, they probably sold though. You know, remember that man? That stress. That that stress money was. I was telling somebody that's like one of my first greatest business moves. Right? Was um. When everybody was bagging up stress, right? Stress was around three fifty, four hundred dollars a pound. You bag it up, get eight thirty. You know, you bag it up, eight hundred thirty dollars. Yeah. And I just was counting, and I was getting it. My my partner Fern off one hundred and eighteenth Street. He had all of the stress weed, and I was I was like I had a plan, and I would start buying pounds. I started buying five pounds, so he's giving to me at three twenty five, and I remember like, all right, I'm just gonna bag up four hundred and fifty dollars, and I'm gonna sell them for five dollars, right? So. Whatever that is, that's how I started. So it's these big old school bags yeah. for five dollars, and I just used to make so much. I would make a hundred dollars. It would it would only be hundred and twenty five dollars profit, but I would make it in three or four hours. Yeah, it would go quick, fast. And I remember selling two pounds. That's good old stress me. Now <laughs> yeah. I walk into some of these places. They got so many names and so much crazy shit going on. Man, that shit is. I don't know how you decide. Oh yeah, it's it's tough because a lot of a lot of these shops including ours, have big-ass menus, you know what I mean? But it's all fire. You know, they wouldn't carry it. They, uh, they wouldn't put it in the shop unless they were doing someone a favor, obviously. Um, but then they get stuck with flour they can't they can't sell because nobody wants it, you know? Can you really taste the difference? Oh, yeah. yeah. Everyone? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If it's, if, it's, if it's not old and ain't been sitting there so long, you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you, could, you could definitely taste the difference in the flavors yeah. and and some of them like got good impact too yeah they get you high as as fuck yeah like like there's a strains that even will like have that citrus taste that will you know like something called orange something or tan or tangerine like when you smoke it it'll have hints of it as you yeah. you know it's yeah it's, yeah that's a real thing i thought people was losing their mind no it's real shit no i remember when i first went up to the bay and um burner was just like he had a shop and I was hanging out with him, and um, he was like, yeah, G, I'm telling you, this is going to be the wave. And he was like, had all these names. I'm like, man, people just smoke weed. They don't give a fuck. I've never been so wrong in my life. He's like, man, people just want to <laughs> smoke weed, man. They don't really, shit, that well, one I got wrong. Well, you know what they do? You ain't wrong on that. The thing is, is that, you know, they like, they like uh, options, right? And when you market the options, they got to sound awesome. So, you know, the names and the marketing, that's everything. What's, what's the first marketable, like, uh, flavor you remember of any weed? No, OG. OG. OG all day, OG mm. push. Like, at least over here in Southern California, what it was for anywhere else. Mm. Uh, I couldn't and say. And I thought that, when they was like OG, I'm like, which asshole? I, I didn't know it meant <laughs> ocean grown. Like I had No, it, did, it doesn't mean ocean grown. It oh, meant it, original. Oh, okay. So they didn't that, fool me and shit. That ocean grown shit is a story that, they made up somewhere else, but here in Southern California, it was original. O oh, original OG. gangster. Original like gangster. No, just original. So that was original. a West Coast brand. Just, yeah. <laughs> OG Kush. Yeah. You guys remember who the first person was that was actually growing it? That was probably Josh D. 
That's Josh is the fucking man. Cause shout out to Josh. <laughs> Putting on Josh. Hell yeah. Salute. Salute. You got any more up there? Yeah, we got a few here. We got Bart's Barbecue up in here saying everyone that buys a ticket or buys one before 11 p.m. tonight will be entered in the VIP giveaway. Oh Gives out God. two VIP wristbands, which will give you reserved seating next to the stage. One ounce of Super Chief Redline Reserve and a 20-minute joint rolling class with Pedro. Oh, oh boy. What? what? With the, with the rolling champ, not wow. runner up Aton. You get it with the champ. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. The wow. IP is going to be popped. The, the champ decided he was going to give a lesson. Wow. He came wow. out of retirement. You better not put no loose tips in there, buddy. Oh. You'll also get a two signed Dr. Green Thumb Funko toys signed by Be Real. Four free drink tickets and a few more items to come. Hey, they, they're gonna, they, Aton's gonna try to get into that VIP area. And be like, Sorry, <laughs> sorry, champs right. only. No wristband. It's barbecue, too, champs huh? only. He's gonna oh, be yeah. judging the joints. <laughs> Who's making the barbecue? Bart's barbecue. Bart's there. barbecue. Some and like best, and thirteen like, other vendors. Yeah. Yeah. Check Saturday. that out. Where they at? Saturday. Where, where's Saturday. Bart? That's uh, where is it at again? Hawthorne. It's Hawthorne. Yeah. Hawthorne. Yeah. Check it's good. Yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, I mean, check that out. All right, I'll get you the link. I need that. And Ooh. we got Diggity Dank up in here. He's asking for a little joint rating, B. Look good. That's uh, not bad. Let's see. Uh, zoom in on the neck. <laughs> Get that. Neck. All right. Roll it to the right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. You squeezed here. <laughs> All right. Keep going. Uh, keep going. That's all farther. Yeah, that's go. that. My bad. You only squeezed once, but that squeeze was enough. But I'll give it an eight. Word. Not bad. It's good shaping. There, it's not too bad of a squeeze. Well done. Well done. Oh, yeah. So you just rate people's rolling skills. Yeah, they want serious <laughs> shit. They ask us. You know, I would rate it if they yeah. didn't ask me. Who, who is the best joint roller? You know, since since I, since this is a the thing, like who is the best one at it? Well, that would have been me, but, you know, if I pull myself out of His it. His name is uh, G7 Photos. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, you know, Pedro was our, our champ for a time, but he, he retired he from retired. Competition, competition rolling. So right now it would be, you know, our guy Aton in there that rolled these that we're smoking today. My that, guy, you just gave yeah, him... Yeah, dude, he's about to... Aton got the belt right now. Yeah. No. no. Oh, he's got the interim belt. They call it an interim belt because he didn't have to battle the real champ for it. Oh. He retired, so that's the it. champ retired. It was the belt. The, ch the belt was vacated because I don't compete. It wouldn't even be fair. Mm, too many years. I'll put experience. a blindfold on and outroll. I'll, ah, you're, I'll you're, you're, roll. You're Vince, ball, Vince McMahon. Come on. Yeah. Vince exactly. McMahon. <laughs> Best part don't that fight. We'd have to battle the real champ. Hey, Vince took thing. some L's too, though. Remember that. Don't forget that. Took hey. some L's. He so, went through tables. He got smashed with chairs. <laughs> Ooh. He he was teaching. <laughs> he, he was, was teaching teach them how to do the how to do the. Thing, I don't you know? know if he was <laughs> teaching at that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. He was being. Wow. He was taking the the bumps that a villain should take. Hmm. Well said. All the bumps. All the bumps. <laughs> he made a pretty good heel, too. Yeah, yeah. This McMahon the best. Made a really great heel. The corporate owner heel. Yeah. I mean, yes. there's no better villain than that. Yeah, especially in this America. <laughs> yeah. He was really good. And he played it great. Shout out to Vince, man. And we got JK up in here saying, missed the show the other day, but I had a good excuse. Whoa. Oh, and this is out in Europe. Ah, oh, sporting event. Damn, that's tight in Europe. Football. Let the bio wave go. Yup. That looks packed, bro. That's tight. It's packed. Don't, don't, don't <laughs> they wear take the, their the shit. T-shirt. They yeah. take their shit serious down there, buddy. Yo, they got you. no drums, but they're just like clap. That's clapping and just voices. You gotta go to a World Good Cup chance. one year. Oh. You know what's Chances. funny? Um, I never liked watching soccer on television. Like as a kid, I didn't like soccer. You know, that wasn't a popular sport mm -hmm. where I'm from. I on TV. I didn't really realize soccer was cool until I went to an LAFC game. Boom. It's by far the best, best. live sporting event. Way better than football, oh, way better than basketball. Yeah, it's um, live. You went to the last one? No, this was like two years ago. Sticks, my boy Sticks from Watts, um, he, he's like into the organization. He does a lot of the yeah. charity stuff. 
And so they wanted me to come to a game, and oh, I went to a game, and I sat on the grass. Like, they have, like, grass-side seats. Yeah, the grass-side yeah. seats, yeah. And I sat there, and but just watching the game, and it's the best sporting event of all sporting events. Yeah. Better than baseball, it's live, I, yeah. basketball, football. The only yeah. thing is close is bo boxing is pretty live, too. But, boxing is live. But sure. soccer was the best, and that was weird. Yeah, you know, we've been, we've been rolling to the games, and I've been playing drums in the crazy section that, that section 52. is crap with all them people that just be screaming yeah. right there the whole time. Yeah, we play drums in that section with with the with the drum section, and it's wow. That man. is crazy. It's, you're right though, man. Like out of out of all the sporting, uh, all the, out of all the LA sports, their presentation and their their excitement, they're the livest. Right. I now. never Lakers game. I've been to Lakers game, Clippers game. Baseball, Dodgers game, like, but that soccer shit live is like, it's crazy, unbelievable. And it's that one section right there. They just be going crazy. I'm like, why are they still? That's it's, on the North goal. Yeah, 45 minutes into the event, they still oh, going. Motherfuckers yep. paint, painting their face and all that. Crazy. Oh, letting off Beers. flares. And they're number one right now. They're in first place right now. Oh yeah, that's good. And they represent they're, they're, number they're, they're, one. They're doing their thing right now. Salute and they the know LA. Celebrate. That's right. Salute to the LAFC. I know a lot of them watch right here. Some of the fans, so salute to y'all. They had the All-Star game yesterday. Yeah. Word? Yeah, they had an All-Star game. They had, like, I think a couple of the players from, like, the one that scored was their, the team captain. So he scored for the All-Star oh, game. Cool. Oh, that's cool. The logo is fire. Yeah, it's a great. It's yeah, they got one. that one right. But, yeah, soccer, nothing is like, it's the best live sporting event I've ever been to. Yeah. That's like by far. It was like a regular game too, like yeah. a Tuesday or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's a Wednesday. Fucking, they're going nuts. Like it's yeah. the weekend. Like it's the weekend. All right, next. And we got Red Boy up in here saying, "I dipped into some Asian food cookbook the other day and made some Japanese fried chicken, egg fried rice, and some shrimp toast." All right. Wow. Okay. What's the? What's that to the left? Is that like mayonnaise? That's what I'm thinking. Bro, he, that's not uh, cool. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's tartar gross. sauce, toothpaste, tartar sauce, maybe. He better not have tartar. Maybe sauce. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> for the shrimp, it's like the it, shrimp, it looked like it came out of tube. Looked like uh, toothpaste or something for the <laughs> shrimp toast, <laughs> right? For or some for the shrimp toast. Because that's not necessarily something that we go with the chicken, right? All right. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I mean, well, the rice. The rice don't. The rice look. look yeah, the rice cool for sure. Rice and All the right. chicken. And the chicken. The chicken a little light. I don't know why is chicken so light. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotta cook the chicken, that's dog. A, that's a diet plate. <laughs> no, that's a salmonella. But what? what, is, what yeah, plate. ask him what is that? <laughs> that tubey stuff right there. That's a cholesterol the plate. <laughs> <laughs> that too. That I would have it though. I would, yes, yeah, I try to. Yeah. Except for that little shit on the side right there, I would try it. Yeah. The rice look cool. Yeah, the need to cook like, that yeah. chicken a little more. Yeah, yeah. Little, just slightly. Little, yeah, soy sauce. Yeah. Next. Yeah, they torture us stoners with these these food shots right oh, here. Oh, yeah. oh making sense. Yeah. I get it. Well, <laughs> next up in here we got Ryan, and he says he's making a little bit of lamb. Oh. Mary had a little lamb and Ryan cooked him. I ain't gonna lie, man. I thought he was making lamb chops. That doesn't look too good. That's yeah. a stew, man. What's what? wrong with that, you? That's not that. That, that, that was some gravy. Oh, okay. so oh, that was a gravy. That was hey, Mary. a gravy. I was like, oh, yeah, all right, that looks good. Hey, Mary, where'd your lamb go? Ah, there you said it. He zone ate him. Not a bad, not a bad gravy look. Okay. Okay. Oh. It just, I thought that was a dish in the beginning because that's what was playing. Oh. See, they don't play with us, glasses. They like, you know, really try to torture us while we're we're at the highest point. Mm, you know, munchies they, is you really know, kicking in. Yeah, because everybody, you know, talks about munchies. <laughs> they figure, let's just help y'all along with this delicious shit we're gonna show y'all. That look all right, right there. Some not, I'm sometimes bad. not so delicious, but most yeah. of the time delicious. <laughs> and lamb, I gotta, <laughs> yeah, I'm make sure. And we got J Max C up in here saying 8:30, and I'm off to a good start. Also included a pic of the re reward of all the steps I took. And this is out in Toronto. How many steps did you take? Oh, 13,000. Was that today's? Mm -hmm. This was yesterday's. Oh, yesterday's? All right. Yeah, I don't know what people. I did yet. What did we do yesterday, man? Hold on. Let me see. What did I do yesterday? I don't think I did that yesterday. Canadian people be active, bro. Can they I do. Can't, I Yo, can't even They doing, walk everywhere. You've been yep. doing yeah. your, your watch, too? Yeah, I've been on the my steps. Shit. 14,000 right. steps. <laughs> let me, Shit. Let me see what I did, man. What do you mean? Um, Shit I just, is crazy. I just got to know just for the sake of knowing. 
I don't think I got him. <laughs> yep, no. I, wait, what did he have? You had 13,800. I had 16,711. I had 19,000. Where were y'all walking to? 19,000 steps. Where are you going? <laughs> On the treadmill. They, yeah, they. Oh. Treadmill. Well, I was about to say, 19,000 well, I do steps. a combination. I'll go walk for like you know, three miles and then get on the treadmill or, or elliptical and do the other half or sometimes uh, the whole shit on the elliptical. You know, we'd be in the fitness over here. How many miles is 19,000 steps? Uh, I'll tell you right now. Nine, uh, well. 10.72. For 16,000 steps, it's yeah. 9.25 20, miles. Oh, my What'd you, <laughs> what'd you do what yesterday? You, Wait, I know what you did yesterday. Hold oh. on. 19,000. Hello. Yeah. Yep, really? ten do it. Ten point seven two miles. He got me by a mile. You damn. The... God damn it. Good I, for you. I felt bad though. Cause the reason I went hard because you guys were kicking my ass the whole fucking day, and I was just <laughs> trying to be fucking quiet. Even Bobo got up on me, and I was like, I ain't about to let Bobo beat me right now. He got to train for this. <laughs> and, I, for this. and I went home, and I was like, fuck this, man. I'm taking this pre-workout, and running five miles, bro. That's why all my two X's be fitting like. Super large now. I was gonna do well, one. Done. Yeah, hey, all my shit. Yeah, dude, this shit's loose, bro. This mm. part of our shirt is new. I was like, man, I bought it to wear this I, shit. I bought these belts and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like at a certain size, and now that I gotta send them back because they don't fit. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Damn, my shit's is good and tighter. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you my belt. Like, <laughs> my old belts. Yeah, yeah. James and by the way, heavy enough. Uh, exactly. yeah. All right, wait <laughs> too much. You know, next. And we got Element <laughs> up in here saying out in A-Zone's favorite waters, out in the ocean. Nah, hell no, nah, bro. I fucked the ocean. Uh-uh. I know you hate the ocean. That's where God puts his mistakes, dude. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> Not true. Why is all the fish ugly then? All the fucking... Ah, not all, all the, the fish are ugly. ugly. There's like uh, fish are ugly. But all the shit, the deeper you go, there's more uglier shit down there. Oh, God's mistakes, dude. I don't, I don't down, think is so. Is there attractive it's fish? I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's pretty, there's some pretty fish, yeah, like the Nemo fish. That's kind of pretty. Sounds like the DB zone. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the piranhas are cute. Nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> Where have we gone? Next. And no, next up, I got a little uh, taco. <laughs> what is this? Taco sway e zone. If you want to talk about this. The oh, High and Hungry trailer. Taco Sway? Oh, yeah, uh, I believe it's, uh, you know, this guy, you see him a lot in the LA, LAFC uh, games all the time. This guy owns a lot of restaurants. His name is Mr. Taco's Way. He has a, a chain of tacos uh, restaurants, and one of them <laughs> is right across the, the what is it? Um, what is it? What's the comedy club? Hey, Colton said Taco Sway. Uh, yeah, Sway. Taco Sway. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, the Laugh Factory. Laugh it's right Factory, across the Laugh Factory. <laughs> and we, uh, C minus myself, Ray, and Ray's dad went over there. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, so make sure you guys check out this preview. Enjoy it. Uh, the episode, is it out now or is it premiering after, Ray? Premiering at four. Premiering, premiering at, at four. four. After the show. Go watch that. Hit that thumbs up. I will be giving away some funky field tips. Uh, the High and Hungry edition that I held on to. So, you know, for the comments. So let it run. Hey, Bolton. What up? It's Tacos <laughs> Way. <laughs> Tacos Way. Tacos Way. And what, speaking of the food, wow, it's getting here. Dude, that was so and, good. Uh, you could, I, I was, I'm sorry. So I've been cold. calling him, I would say Mr. Tacos Way the whole time. That's right. Check this out. <laughs> Tacos Way. Mm. I got the, that's going on at 4 o'clock Make sure you guys check it out That's episode 8 out of our 12 episode season Damn And if you haven't watched the last one Go watch the Low Key Burrito Best breakfast burrito from You know All the way from here to Canada Man Tacos is my favorite though Bro you gotta yeah. check them out Like literally it, Like my favorite place Is a place called Taco Superior That I've been going crazy over But like tacos are my favorite shit Like they're, I love I, just I can had, eat tacos every day I just had two, two of them before They're good and they're light yeah, yeah not too heavy. Yeah. Well, depending where you get them. Pork. And their comfort. They I always ask for one tortilla, bro. Yeah, that's what I do. That's for yeah. sure. When I get street time, I go single yeah, tortilla. Yeah, like, that double tortilla. What's your, what's, like, I should have tear you what's up. Your, what's yeah. your favorite? It's too much, yeah. What, what do you like? Like chicken, pork? Asada. Yeah, asada. asada. Ooh, asada. asada. Ooh, asada. Ooh, asada. Yeah, no. Yeah, chicken. But I, I like pretty much all tacos, and, and like that's really my favorite shit, dog. Like I eat them all the time. 
I never get tired, like ever. You can't if it's good. <laughs> if it's good, yeah. If it's good, you can't get tired yeah. of that shit. It's just, man. That's the best. You'll stuff yourself on those shits, man. That's and they're what good. I mean, have a taco party. Yep. Taco. Like all desserts. Oh, taco parties ain't bad. Yeah. <sighs> All right, Bolt. Yeah, How many fire. more you got up there? I uh, just want to let everyone know tomorrow at 420, we got a new funky drop happening. We got the Nomad Funky dropping tomorrow at 420, and it's coming in the classic size. Word up. So picking up before E Zone, Cali Blaze, and Step Tone buys them all out. Yeah. They are limited on the website, 420. Get them. Yep. Check out the preview pictures on the Funky Field Tips page and show some love because uh, sometimes I do give away one of the extra ones in there. Yep. Yep. Anything else? Nope, seems to be it. Word up. We want to thank you for your submissions. Now it's time to open up the doors to the Insane Asylum. So if you got a question, shout out, comment, suggestion, now's your time. Open it up. Welcome to the Insane Asylum. Let's do this. All right, let's do this. We got AJ Sense up in here in the Super Chat saying you guys should live stream the mixes on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Oh, we can't. We oh, could. yeah, to get flagged, huh? Yeah. yeah. They'll yeah. shut our page down. <laughs> a heartbeat. Yeah. It's, Somebody's new. We'd have to do all yeah. music that's unpublished, owned by us. Or play 90 seconds of every song. Probably still get flagged. And we'll sure. still get flagged for yeah. our own stuff. It's not like Be Real said it like a billion times why we don't have mixes on here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Co- if you want to see our mixes, uh, there's Twitch. B underscore Real TV is the place. We popped one off yesterday. Um, what's today? Today's Thursday, right? Right? We <laughs> popped one off on Tuesday. Oh, sorry. We popped one off on Tuesday. We're popping one off today Af- after the show. B underscore real TV, Psycho Less, and myself. So, um, real psycho. get ready for that. We're all popping reds. Next. Friends. We got the inner realms up in here saying, have you guys ever seen Dark Side of the Ring? Yes. Is that the one about the TV and the bitch that comes out the TV? Yeah. No, that's, uh, it's a wrestling <laughs> Oh, a documentary. Yeah, I thought it, it sounded like a scary movie. I was like, "Is that the Ring Part 2? I don't know if it's a <laughs> it's a documentary. It's like a series that I think maybe oh, Vice does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I immediately thought of Pink Floyd. Yeah. No. Like <laughs> the the Vice uh, Network, they do this thing every year called you know Dark Side of the Ring, and it's all like the dark story, the dark stories from wrestling. Mm. Mm. Certain like certain uh, wrestlers that had like the troubled past and you know controversial deaths or whatever you know what I mean like they had a lot of those and that's what that is I'm and they're I think out. and I think they're on Vice yeah oh is that hacksaw Jim Duggan hacksaw he was dope too he was super dope with this two by four oh I don't know if that was hacksaw but that was uh but yeah he used mm. to come in with a two by four. And then you would do the thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> I, sometimes I think about how corny it was, but it was so dope when I was a kid. I used to just love it. Every Hell part yeah. of it. Yeah. And I, say, he, I was thinking about it. Remember they had, uh, I was real little. It was Hulk Hogan was going to wrestle against uh, the dude that uh, Iron Sheik. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was the. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a big deal. Iron Sheik Twitter account is crazy. Madison oh, he's, Square hey, Garden. He's a cool motherfucker, man. His, his Twitter you. account is fire. Yo, any, anytime you would see blood on TV, like blood. That was crazy. Bust, it was crazy as a kid. Yeah. Like, you know. Oh, they knew how to give the show. Uh, That's yeah, for yeah. sure. Those are the good ones. Yeah, those are epic matches. Work. And we got Megan up in here asking Did C minus get the death scream whistle? I yeah. sure did. Hey, uh, yeah, I did. Uh, thank you, Megan. It's right here. And uh, Ezon, t- why don't you give us a little story? Um, b bro told me not to blow that shit, um, after, like, what, well, I guess while we were on and, air. And he right? blew it. And, or, and uh, I waited till he left, and it was my show. And I was like, Xavier, hear this, thinking it was going to be funny, and it was going to just be a real whistle. But that shit sounds like a woman getting fucking murdered, dude. Like, this shit, like, it, it is fucking scary at how... Like the sound, I was like, I just put it back in the box. I was like, I don't want to. You know, I heard Dom play it. It wasn't (laughs) as scary as that, but there was one tone. Yeah, it's the tone that he did hit. It was like, oh, that's what Ezone was talking about. And if you like, and and that's the tone I hit. But I, I hit, I hit hard, bro. (laughs) And I was like, (laughs) I I, I scared myself, bro. 
I was like, yo, this is a little bit like weird. I was like, what if I did summon something and then all of a sudden the ring bitch comes out the TV now? Yeah. <laughs> Battle down. He, it's, it's, he fuck with his ring. What is it's it? It's called a what? It's a so so screaming I, Aztec death whistle. Like they would blow that shit before motherfuckers would go into like some before Aztec into war. war. Yeah. Maringa. To let them know it's like, oh and man, we're about to get fucked up. It would scare the shit out of the other side. Uh, it's like Mike Tyson walking with no music to the ring. Right. Yeah. No yeah. socks on. Yeah. No, no robe. Just looking crazy. Just the towel. <laughs> People just buy. That was like the coldest. <laughs> that was the. He just come walking out. eBay. No socks. I don't know how he boxed with them. His feet got to be messed up with them. No <laughs> socks. He's got more grip in them shoes, man. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Next. And we got Wally G up in here asking, "What are the racing rules and the costs that go with it?" Um, every rule is set on its own. You know what I mean? Like some. Like, there's a lot of rules. It depends on how you race. And if you race in the hands, it's a certain rule. Flashlights, it's a certain rule to start the race. Like, um, it's pretty much eight times out of ten going to always be an argument. But um, it's so many tricky ways to race. People can give each other space ahead, to, you know, like a handicap. People huh. let you leave first. I mean, it's so many different ways. Um, for sure, the consistent rule is, if you go in the next person's lane, you lose. You lose. That's for sure. No matter which race, that's the one constant. If you go in the next person's lane, you lose. So you got to definitely keep it in your lane or outside. Stay in your own lane, man. Yeah. Man. That's a consistent rule. That's life. <laughs> and we got Adam up in here saying, be real. It's dope having Julio G on the show now. Yes. Uh, salute to Julio. He was up here um, on Tuesday. He's going to be here on Tuesdays. So, um, Historian. Yeah. Shout out to my OG, man, yeah. from Linwood, man. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. First person ever played my record on radio. Yeah, it's oh, dope to see him on the show, man. Yeah. <laughs> he came back. I mean, he used to do a show here on Be Real TV um, for a time. And then uh, it was a yeah, well, while This back. is a minute. Yeah. 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 It's been a minute. And uh, I mean, you know, he came back ripping it with us on Tuesday. So salute That's to Julio oh, yeah. Jeezy. You know Jeezy. I like that he always plays. He always has the opinion on both sides, which is really cool. Yeah. yeah. Like Hitler, and I was like, there's no, it's not, it's like there's no in between. He presented both sides. Now give your input, dog. Yeah. Like just there's you can't you can't help but to give him like a solid ass answer. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you're cornered into a position where it's like you can't hit me with a yes or no, dog. <laughs> yeah, like it's, you're good. He's a really yeah. dope voice of reason. Always yeah. have, man. Yeah. yeah. Hey, he's a smart dude. Yeah. And we got C10 Adam up in here saying, Yo, B, where's the pictures of the glass house smoke box and the thousand faces of demons? What? <laughs> what? what is that? I mean, who got the glass house smoke? We got to take the picture and the video and all that stuff. You said there's demons in that car? No, I didn't say that. Anything about no Blow demons? Fuck away. Blow the whistle. Th Maybe that's an old. Oh, you're whistle. talking about? Oh, yeah, no, you said, and the thousand faces of demons. Oh, that was oh. Kenji's picture in the old oh, building. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When we were in the other building on Flower, and he took that one picture of his smoke that he blew out, and everything in that smoke, like, were a bunch of fucking faces of, like, demons and shit like this. It was the craziest smoke plume you could ever see. We moved out of that building shortly. <laughs> We're like, fuck <laughs> this. Get the fuck out. Like, hell no. Because we've seen shit move around in there in a different way than we've seen things move around in here. Evil. Uh, I don't know if it was evil, but it was more aggressive. Those faces it were was aggressive. Friendly, it was very much more aggressive. It liked to, it liked to do things. <gasps> yeah. And we yeah. got Birdie up in here saying, my favorite uh, wrestlers from the 90s was Kane and Rey Mysterio. Not okay. bad. All right. Yeah. Bad. Ray Mysterio yeah. is like the prototype for what you see happening now in the ring. He's a luchador mm -hmm. spokesperson. That's right. All that quick, um, agile, flip around the ring stuff that they're yep. doing now. Boom. He wrestling. Was... Wrestling enjoyed the dope resurgence in the 2000 with Stone Cold and all of those. Oh, yeah. Guys. The Rock, too. He, he was he very was, impactful. Oh, man. He's, he, sometimes you don't even talk about how. You know, that that definitely was Hulk Hogan's child. Yeah. <laughs> Super dope. And we got Bueno up in here saying AEW is on the come up. Shout it to Chris Jericho. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's Chris where retired wrestlers go to wrestle. 
I gotta check that out. Well, they're still doing things. I mean, they're they're you know. Yeah. No, but all the all the ones that did that did they're like we're not really doing much. I ain't gonna like to be one hundred. That network brought those fools back to life. Even the fools that couldn't stop drinking was like, look, we're gonna give you a good contract. Just cut the shit. You know, and, 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 and it's got to be that, though. And, and, it's got to yeah. be that. No, and they're performing very well because it's cool to see that some really? of these legends like still go up in there. I don't know why, why Chris Jericho left WWF. Hey, or hey, if you want to get paid, cut this shit. Yeah, no, but it's somebody. <laughs> but somebody gave a shit about these guys who were just sitting there collecting dust. But well, yeah, because some of those guys are legends, too. And, and if they could still work and still willing to work and healthy enough to work. Yeah. I think that's the thing is it's so hard to build a modern star because, you know, social media made everybody popular regardless of talent. So I think the the real gem is in, in that stardom that you had to be a star at first. You had to be special. So I would love to watch Michael Jordan play Magic Johnson in a one on one game. I don't care what happened. I would pay to watch it. Yeah. I would pay to watch a lot of legends do things that they don't want to do anymore. I don't quite understand why. Yeah, man. He God fights Aiden. That's a huge one to see that. That's not even fair phase. <laughs> they would have to hit that gym hard. <laughs> like, <laughs> Both sides. <laughs> like that. It's going to be the new Hollywood movie. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you have quite a, quite a imagination. That's the fight now. of the universe. The fight <laughs> of the century. <laughs> yeah. That wouldn't even be a good fight. I don't know. They both I'm, got I'm powers, fine. dude. This shit would go wild, bro. We, no, no. It'd be like when the Transformers no, God, fucked no, up no. the whole city. God gave <laughs> him his power. Yeah, and, that's his son. Yeah, yeah he, God gave him his power in the first place. He, he still will give us he, a good five rounds. He don't got enough. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, first round stoppage. <laughs> I, now, me and Satan, even that'd if, be a good fight. Even if he had demon steroids. I'll fight Satan. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a good fight. I'll fight Satan. I'll line it up with him. That'd be a good <laughs> fight. I'll line it up. <laughs> See. Get a fair one, Jordan, with, <laughs> man. With I, if nothing else, I feel like he owe it to us, like a fair one. He should just choose somebody. Be like, y'all want a fair one? Mysteriously, yeah. just pop up in your house. <laughs> you asked for yeah. this. What's good? Oh. Put him up. Yeah, just real quick. Oh. Put him up. Let's get it real quick. <laughs> and we got Spin up in here saying, "Show to the table. This is a great show." Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Cheers. Salute, Spin. Uh, hell yeah. Salute. And we got Steve-O, Steve-O up in here saying, I had a homeboy from Cali. I'm originally from Texas, and he always used to talk about the balloons. And I was always like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Until I saw E-Zone's show one time. <laughs> uh, it's very people, educational. People have been bring, asking me to bring back <laughs> Hank, but honestly, ever, we went so hard on my birthday that I just, I felt like it's been six months. Yeah, man, you're... you're... But I, I, but then I bought those two tanks. Anniversary. So, yeah, so we're halfway there, so we're going to do a halfway point celebration. <laughs> so do you think it has, does it have any long term effect? I just think if you don't like, here's the thing, bro. I think the human body, like, my, my, not answering it. My here's logic, the thing. my logic on shit, bro, is like, if you're not doing something that really completely alters your shit, I think if you, if, if, if the human body has enough power to recuperate from the most difficult shit, no way, fool. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm like, in other you, words, if you don't overdo it, yeah, right. okay, okay. Right. And it's it's not like I'm shooting up heroin either. Like, you know, I'm not going to feed this <laughs> shit. Of course not. I know you're not. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be like, yo, fill up another tank, please. Like, be oh, falling God. asleep at the table, <laughs> nodding yeah. the fuck out. Are there like fiends of it like that? <laughs> no, it's, it's it's fiends more in the sense where it's like, hey, dude, you're just doing this too quick. Like, chill. Just yeah. enjoy it. Because some people would just go, and they just bam. And that was like, you. Yeah, I'm like, yo, I mean, because it's beginning, because it, it's pure. Yeah. It wears out fast, too. Yeah. Oh, just a laugh yeah. headache, and then you also got to take it like pretty slow, cause like if you're getting it like from the actual, what is tank, it like a thirty second? So that's, that's like the you, same yeah. thing when you step on that pedal, right? Like it's almost like you gotta almost enjoy it, like kind of like a, like you know, like like a like you would a drink, but like take a little bit, chill, haha, that was funny. A quick one, and you know what I mean? Because like, if you overdo it, it's too cold, bro. Like, you get, there's repercussions <laughs> yeah. to the shit. I'm gonna pitch a new name for you, like drag racing. We call it squeezing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, because it's a button, and yeah. you squeeze the button, so yeah. we call it. Oh, you squeezing? It's you should start squeeze. calling it that. squeezing. Squeeze. You need, now you, now you, everybody's gonna be saying it out. We're gonna need, add it to the less thing. You guys need a button on your tank so you could squeeze. Yeah, yeah. We gotta make a sticker just so you push it. Just start nozzle. calling it and be like, yeah, just squeezing. Squeeze. That's a better name because it don't have a. Yeah. A catchy name. Yeah. Nazim. Yeah, that's like, no, that's yeah. super wet. Hey, Nazim. 
Yeah, yeah, that does squeezing. Yeah. squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. That's what we call it in the race. Squeeze. Everybody starts buying Les's shirts. Squeeze, <laughs> like he doesn't know why. Squeeze it off. Make that shirt. Get you a picture of a Les bottle. Les has it. We're gonna yeah, buy yeah. his. Look, get you a picture of two bottles and put squeezing. Yeah. It'd be the <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna squeeze for sure. Squeeze. <laughs> oh, it sound real good. It's Probably fucked now. up. It's <laughs> fucked up. I done fucked it's up. Holy <laughs> oh, shit, dude. You down to squeeze, Les? <laughs> Damn! <laughs> I'm not. Oh, oh. <laughs> I just <laughs> fucked the world up again. Yeah. Uh, no squeezing. No homie I'm squeezing. No squeeze. And we got Midget Mike up in here saying, today is hip-hop's birthday. What's the table's favorite album of all time? Oh. Mm. Uh, pfft, that's hard. Yeah. But I'll say, on mine, one of my first, well, one of my fa first favorites was... Uh, Public Enemies takes the nation to millions. Nice. And hold us back. Okay. Nice. Uh, of all time. I would say Long Live the King, Big Daddy Kane. Ooh. Nice. Okay. Nice. Kane is dope. And he used to rap over fat. I, yeah, he I've been to... studying so much Kane stuff, it's scary. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he, he used, used to, to rap, rap over fast. fat ass shit. 119 and up. 119 and up. Uh, that's cardio. That was the chronic. Right. Nice. nice. That's a good I, choice. I took that from my brother's CD thing, and I was like, I was like, man, all What's right. this? The, the new album's out. You ain't gonna listen to this one. Right. <laughs> I just took it. I just kept listening. It's a good it. album, though. Yeah. It is a good one. It's yeah. A good album. It's a great one. Oh yeah. And we got Midget Mike back up in here saying, first rhyme, yo glasses. What made you make um, the album Crack Music or the Crack mixtape? We were selling crack. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is. Honestly, that was the truth, and it was like, um, when I first got into the music industry, I was like, I wanted to just open a record label. I didn't see myself as a rapper. I enjoyed rapping. It was real therapeutic to like express all of the stuff we was going through at that time, shootouts, selling drugs, just crazy stuff happening. And um, I named the Crack Mixtape because we were selling crack at the time. And I named White Lightning, White Lightning, based off of some charm I had that was super clear. And we called it White Lightning in the streets. That's honestly how I came up with my first two titles. Was that a good move? Um, Name I don't me. think nobody knew what White Lightning was. Yeah. They probably thought it was um, Moonshine. Yeah, they didn't know. Yeah. Um, I think it was good for marketing. I don't yeah. think it really had no true impact. Because you know nowadays, it's, yeah. motherfuckers is coming at you. <laughs> oh, that's he was cool. talking. Man. Yeah. What's funny, the favorite album, I just realized, I was like, damn, if I had the, the shadiest one. Shadiest one. I have, that shit is like, oh yeah. Dub C, the Dub shadiest C. one is ingrained in my mind as, like, that's my shit. Like, if I had one last album out of all the albums and I had to get rid of every album, mm. I'd have the shadiest one. Hey, Dub, Dub C can flip it. Yeah. Man, yeah. he don't get enough Love credit Dub. on that. And tunes, and oh, tunes yeah. on those beats, beats. and, and, and Battle, Cat. Battle Cat on Battle those beats. Cat. Yep. And I think CJ Mack helped with the story. I, I just think it was really, that project don't get enough. Yeah. That's a that's a really great project. You're Shady. right, though. Hey, they got, you got some Sherm heads in the chat room because they're like, that, sound, that, look, that sounds like it was some pure ass Sherm. <laughs> so what's crazy about- Oh, they're fucking, they, they like, no, yo. What's crazy whoa, whoa, about Sherm, right? So Sherm used just like a piss yellow color. Uh, the pipe, the preparadine determines the color. Feel me, the pipe. So if the pipe is yellow, the Sherm is yellow. You know, whatever it is, you know, whatever you, that's whatever you're making. But this pipe we had got our hands on was clear, straight clear, like seven up. And it made the charm clear, but it was so fucking, the charm came out so strong. And um, it was like, you could, we had a challenge, like, you know, and the other niggas had a challenge, like, yo, bro, if you could hit this more than twice, you could have it. And like, I had, it worked, like it was popping and nobody could hit it more than twice. They were stuck. And I remember just buying the last three gallons of it and keeping it for myself. Like, I'm finna sell all this shit. And I was marketing it across the city. Like, I got white lightning. What y'all want to do is, so this is everybody like, oh, I'm going to come two hits. And people just be stuck like a, like a mannequin, bro. Yeah, It was man. Like crazy. That's the thing. Sherm will have you stuck. It is no. Stuck in the portal. That's yeah. the real portal Ooh. right there. Yeah. I, uh. I swear to God. When the Lakers won the championship in 1986, man, they, they had the parade here downtown. There was two pimps that had just smoked some Sherm, and they were in white suits with vests. They didn't have their jackets. They must have lost their jackets. They must have gotten a scuffle 
or must have just got out in the county jail because their white suits were all dirty, but they were stuck right there like. Like a mannequin. Oh, yeah. Straight up. They, and they was they was talking to each other, but they could not move. <laughs> mm. it's, it's, it's that. Yeah. I, I used to sell a lot of Sherm, man. Like, and when I tell you the, the effects of you seeing it, you know what I'm saying? It's, oh, man, it, it's different. It, it was strong, man. How do, People just, how do you take Sherm? What is so you, you so dust is Sherm, mint leaves soaked in Sherm. So you really just, like, you might take a cigarette, and you got an ounce of Sherm bottle. Okay. You dip the cigarette in the bottle, you turn it upside down, the Sherm run down, and you smoke the cigarette. Let it dry? No, no, you or could wet? smoke it wet, but that's why they call it wet. Wet, no right? But what's crazy is our Sherm used to be so good, you couldn't light it. So you had to light a blank cigarette, like a bear cigarette, and then light it with it that way. Huh. Yeah, and then you just smoke like a regular cigarette. But they used to do a, what you call them, lovelies, which is a primo. Dip your cigarettes. So. Primo dip. Wow. They had different stuff. Yeah, there was we used to call sorts. it a hurricane, which is a joint dip. All sorts of shit. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers used Those, to get it too. It was some I, shit, I, man. I was doing the original pre-rolls yeah. then. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we used to buy cartons, cartons of Newports. They call it Sherman because it was a cigarette initially that they used to always dip on. It was a brown roll cigarette called a Sherman. And you usually use those, but by the time I started hustling, everybody was using Newports and Cam- and Humps, you know what I'm saying? Or so it's different. And we got Brian Field up in here. He's saying he's smoking some Cali Fire. He's sending us a little super sticker as well. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Word up. We got Avatar256 up in here asking Glasses Malone, what's your top five producers? In hip-hop? Yeah. It's tough. I'm from the West, so it's going to always come across a bit biased. But I, first off, I'm going to shout out Marley Moore just to start, and I'm going to shout out KG just to start. Just to start. Right. Right? Them two is really important. So it's going to be Dr. Dre is number one. Um, If I'm doing a whole country, ah, man. Do you got to, like, because <laughs> for some reason, I, I give Puff entirely too much credit as a producer, but I think I'm right to. Um, Cause I don't want to take credit from, you know, uh, the other people that was working with him. But I yeah. feel like Puff was a super dope supervisor in any Yeah, room. for sure, executive producer. Yeah, and, and just music, take understanding that, take, the music. Take that. Number three, if I'm going the whole country, I like Jermaine Dupri. Yeah, he's. I, I don't think hits. he gets enough credit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Number four is probably Kanye. Kanye has been able to do some really dope stuff. And number five, the producer I don't think gets enough credit is Manny Fresh. Manny Fresh, Manny Fresh like sure did don't. every beat for Cash Money from 1996 to 2006. Yep. Every beat. All right. All right. So I don't think that's even been done before. Yeah. Not with like consistent albums. He was working. Right. He was putting that work in for yeah, real. That, that's Man. crazy. Salute to Manny Fresh. That's how I'm a rock right there. That's legendary. But my 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 favorite guys is Quick is gonna be there, Dre gonna be there, Mugs gonna be there, Cat gonna be, pretty much everybody from the West. Yeah, you had to. That's a hard list to make. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I said. You can't really. It, it's, there's too many. It's too, and there's too much going on. Like yeah. it's it's. Do I like the beats? Some people shit I don't even like, but they shit is working. Yeah. Man, you yeah. see a lot of that. And that seems to be it for the Super Chats. Word up. Salute to all y'all for your Super Chats. And uh, once again, for your submissions, we appreciate you. If you haven't smashed that like yet, do it before the show ends. I right, smash that subscribe if you ain't, you know, already done so. And click that all notification bell for all the content we be dropping. All right. This has been another Dr. Green Thumb show, and we appreciate y'all getting down with us to catch this on the replay. Go to Apple Music and Spotify or Spotify and search for the Dr. Green Thumb podcast. All right. It's a little behind, but it's catching up. But uh, all the replays are there, so uh, check them. And uh, we want to thank Glasses Malone for sitting in with us. Thank you for having me, man. It's always a pleasure, man, to share a space with you. I always feel like I learned something. Today I learned about uh, squeezing, yeah, <laughs> yeah, squeezing, squeezing, squeezing out. Yeah, <laughs> I always learn, man. And I, I, another thing, I think you stay sharp as an MC. I really love that. 
Thank you. I think your pen is like you, Sugar Free. So, uh, certain people who I grew up listening to, their pens are still just as sharp as the first day. By the grace of God. Amen. Hey, yeah. Word up. Sharper than ever. You, you got any shout outs? I'll shout out to everybody that fuck with it. Word. Nice and simple. All right. C minus. <laughs> Uh, what up, everyone? Thanks to everyone that joins me in the morning for the morning mixes. Uh, tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., we're doing all kitchen sink, which is I go everywhere. And uh, thank you, everyone, that got one of the t shirts. Uh, you can go to gjcminus.com and follow me at cminusfan4 on all the social medias. And I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And then we're doing the mix after the show tomorrow as well, too. Come on. So uh, tomorrow's going to be a fun Friday. So nice. Peace to everybody. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 9 a.m. Psycho Leasy. Yo. Cheers, everybody. Um, shout out Glasses for coming through. Uh, um, if you're on the grind, go to psycholess.official. If you're checking for the Psycho merch, the psycholessshop.com. And um, don't forget, Saturday is that Smoke Fest. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> Bart's Barbecue. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hit you with that link. Please, please. Talking about, I don't know how many people is going to be cooking but all kind of 14. foods and and music i all kind of things I, yeah all kind of things big things yeah. so be, you know be reezy's gonna be in the house and on that note we you know chill for the mix after this squeeze squeeze Bolton. shout out to the insane asylum thank you guys so much shout out to rain morning shot films shout out to the dominator don't forget about the Nomad Funky dropping tomorrow at 420 in the classic size. And also, I just got word, it's 30% off Dr. Green Thumb's LAX. When you're checking out, ask your bud, ton, bud tender for 30% off, and they will hook you up. What's yes, up, E-Zone? Uh, make sure you guys tune in later from 7 to 9 to another, for another episode of the We Don't Smoke the Same podcast. Uh, we're going to be going down the conspiracy hole, so make sure you guys tune in. We got special guest Hibbler coming on. He shut down the internet last time we were on here talking about Flat Earth. So let's see what we're talking about this time. And uh, yeah, once again, shout out to Steptone for the all, all mirror table that we got up there. That's Ray's new desk. And we love it. We appreciate it. And we hope to have you back in another interview. I will be uh, doing a comedy as well with my co-host Xavier Saturday at uh, Bart's Barbecue. So make sure you guys tune in. I think we're starting at 3 o'clock since it's like a day thing. So make sure you guys tune in. I got like a few uh, opening liners with uh, Bart's. I love yeah. this guy. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Thank, it's nice meeting you too, man. It's all love, yeah, bro. Yeah, and check out the new episode of High and Hungry. You know what I'm saying? Word up. Hey, man. Um, make sure you check out those Dr. Green Thumb dispensaries with the insane flavor bags. All fire. Take your oven mitts because you'll burn your fingers when you put your fingers on this fire right here. All right. And uh, there's also the Dr. Green Thumb bags. Turp Mansion, you know what I'm saying? Um, check those uh, codes right there. Scan, scan code right there, and you will learn about the farms that we collaborated with to put the flavors in the bags. You heard it before. Experience the flavors. They're all fire right here. Stay with love. Love is the key. No boof, no negativity, all right? Catch us in the mix on, on Twitch right after this. B underscore Real TV is the place. Real Psycho. Real Psycho 1. Let's go.